I played 302 days of Stardew Valley but on hardcore mode and have attained perfection. Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome to the full movie of the Stardew Valley Hardcore Perfection series. This movie includes the 100 days, 200 days and 300 days of playing Stardew Valley on hardcore mode. Channel membership is now available so if you want to support me further, check that out on my channel page. So let's jump straight into the video and let's have some fun. The first thing we're going to look at here is the farm type. As you can see, there's lots of farms we can choose. We will, however, go with the beach farm because we cannot use sprinklers on the beach farm. This will make life much more difficult, especially for me, as I won't be able to use tons and tons of crops to make huge profits. Next up, we are going to go the community center route and we are going to remix the bundles to make that much harder to complete the community center. We're also going to remix the rewards you get in the mines, making it a little bit more difficult to plan ahead because I won't know what's going to be in the chests. We're going to spawn monsters on the farm and we're going to set the profit margin right down to a whopping 25%. Let's kickstart day one. We're going to cut down some trees, make a chest, and once this chest is made, we're then going to plant those parsnips, water those up, and as per usual, we're going to run around the map to find as many forgeables as possible. Once all the forgeables have been attained, we will then speak to as many NPCs as we can and try to complete the introductions quest as quickly as possible to get more money from that, as we will be getting very little money from other items in the game. Day number two, we found our first artifact. We can give that straight into Gunther. We're also picking up a quest here from Harvey. He's looking for a seaweed and he's offering 60 gold for that. We get our free fishing rod off Willy, so we're going to pull up some fish. When I sold all the fish to Willy at this stage of the game, the 25% profit margin hit me real hard and I realised I wouldn't be able to have an explosive start in spring like I planned. It was going to take some serious grinding to make some progress on hardcore mode. I did however give Gunther the artifact and I was surprised to know that the quests still give you the full amount of money. So we're going to be doing a lot of quests on this 100 day challenge. I paid Harvey a visit, gave him the seaweed, that was another quest complete. But we also get friendship points as well so this will also be a good method to increase friendship points with the NPCs without spending too much money on items to give as gifts. The next quest was to give someone a gift, I just gave Evelyn a dandelion there just so I can complete that quest and get another 100 gold. Add it to the wallet. I spend the rest of the day more or less fishing, despite the fact that fish don't give a whole lot of money right now. I still wanted to increase as much skills as possible, just so I can make the most out of the run. The big challenge this season was to get access to the desert to start farming iridium ores. That was going to be very difficult with the discount set at 25%. I fished all day today because it was raining, so I can get the exclusive rainy fish, such as the catfish and the eel. I got level 5 fishing, gonna go with Fisher, fish for 25% more, just to get a few more coins for the fish. Day 4 it was time for another quest, Shane wanted a carp, he was offered a 90 gold, I wasn't gonna turn that down because I needed all the money I could get. So I found Shane inside Georgia Mart, gave him the carp and that completed another quest, which rewarded me with a nice 90 gold in the pocket. It is a small amount of gold, but money gains in this playthrough will be very small, so we have to make the most of what we got. <laughs> Day number five, let's harvest all these lovely parsnips. Once these parsnips have been picked up, we're gonna go into the mines, make our way down as quickly as possible, grabbing copper, iron, and gold along the way. Once I got down to floor 10, I got these boots called work boots to give plus two defense. That wasn't too shabby at all, it was better than zero defense. When I got down to floor 20 today, I got a magnet ring. I was actually very happy with that. I was hoping for a weapon upgrade though, because I still had the rusty sword. Not to worry though, because shortly after I busted open a crate and I managed to get the forest sword, which has an 8 to 18 damage, which was pretty good for starting out. So I was super happy there with the forest sword. I should be able to make fairly short work of enemies with that. Day 6 I went into the community centre, just a few new bundles such as the medicine bundle, the sticky bundle, 500 sap to complete that bundle. The daffodil was replaced with the spring onion for the spring forgy bundle but that was okay because spring onions are really simple to get as well. So we are doing another quest here, George wants a quartz, 75 gold for that, we won't turn good old George down. So what's great about the discount is that despite the fact you don't get a whole lot for the crops you sell, Pierre's crops also got reduced, so they were very cheap to buy, which was great. So I purchased one of each spring crop from Pierre because I just didn't know what the future community centre bundles would have in store for me. So I decided to play it on the safe side. Back into the mines as well for the rest of the day, I got down to the dark floors. 
Mined up a diamond there, which is really nice. And I made it down to floor 40 here, and I got the slingshot. Now, I don't actually use the slingshot at all, so I just throw that away. I then leave the mines, and I'll come back when I get a copper pickaxe later on, just to make the most out of the time that I have. I met some furnaces, though. Put those on the beach farm, smelting up some copper bars. I'm going to sell a load of fish here to Willy, in the hopes to get enough money to upgrade some tools. And I did get enough money from selling all those fish. I just got over the 2,000 gold needed. To get my first tool upgrade off Clint, it was time to upgrade our pickaxe to a copper pickaxe so we could make faster progression in the mines. So I decided to give Mayor Lewis a birthday gift today. I didn't have anything he loved, but I did have something that he liked, which was an amethyst, and that got two hearts for Mayor Lewis. And that's the first birthday of this run completed. We are going for perfection, so we do need to max out all the relationships. On day 8, another quest presented itself. Gus wanted a copper bar, 180 gold for the copper bar was pretty good. So I paid Gunther a visit, gave him loads of minerals just to unlock some rewards. I got some cauliflower seeds, which I planted on the farm straight away. It's always nice to get free seeds. And I spent the rest of the day pulling up some fish, trying to level up my fishing skill so I can get more perks to make my life just a tad bit easier. I also get my pickaxe back off Clint as well, that's the copper pickaxe. I make some spring wild seeds as well i'm gonna plant those the tea saplings won't sell for a fraction of what they normally sell for but it's better than nothing of course once i finish up watering all of the seeds here i'm gonna go into the saloon give gus the copper bar he wanted that makes gus happy but more importantly it adds some precious money to my wallet that's 180 gold in the bag so we are back in the mines i'm slaying dust sprites getting down deeper getting some rewards dust sprites will be prioritized of course because if you kill 500 you get a nice burglar ring day 10 starts with a whopper of a quest from emily she's offering 600 gold for the catfish we were absolutely not going to turn emily down on that request it was vincent's birthday today we gave him a daffodil which is a light gift and we were rewarded with two hearts from him which is pretty good spent the rest of the day back in the mines getting down as further as possible I got Dormant Boots here on floor 50, plus 1 defense, plus 2 immunity. I decided to keep the boots I had, because the boots I had gave plus 2 defense. When I got down to floor 60, I got the Crystal Dagger. I noticed that when I selected the dagger, it had a price on it for 200 gold, and this got me thinking. I wonder could I sell weapons to Marlin for the price they're actually worth. So I decided to keep the dagger and experiment later on with Marlin in the Adventurer's Guild, once I got access. I gave Robin her last axe. This was going to net me another handy 250 gold in the bag. I then went to Emily, gave her the catfish, and that was going to get me a lovely 600 gold, which was so nice. I needed so much money right now to get stuff done, especially tool upgrades, and get some buildings placed on the farm to make progression easier. Marilyn did indeed give me the full price for the weapons and the boots, so I was really irritated about getting rid of those terminal boots should have kept them would have got more money but i will know going forward that if i come across weapons and footwear to keep them and to sell them to marlin to make some extra money on the side so it was back down into the mines and what i was doing here was i was farming slime i was also farming bug meat and i was also farming copper ores because i was going to make a ring called a sturdy ring which sells for a whopping 750 gold per ring and that was how i was going to make tons of money in spring because if Marlin was giving me full whack for the weapons I found, he would surely give me full price for the rings that I made. So let's find out if this tactic is viable. If it is, then it would be a great way to get into the desert early. If I just stock up on copper, bug meat and slime, I can make tons of sturdy rings, which will make progression go a lot smoother for me. We are back on the farm. We have the bug meat, we have the slime and we have some copper bars. It was time to make some sturdy rings. Once the rings were made, I went straight up to the Adventures Guild, spoke to Gil, got an insect head from doing the bug monster eradication goals. Then it was straight over to Marilyn to sell him all of these lovely rings and weapons that I had. Windspire sold for 50, insect head sold for 200, and a sturdy ring sold for a whopping 750 gold per ring. This was an absolute game changer for me. This was going to be the method I was going to use to get into the desert early. I was going to mass produce rings and sell those to Marilyn to make tons of money. Down to floor 80 we picked up the Templar's blade. Is it better though than the wood mallet? I quickly checked the stats between two weapons and decided to keep the wood mallet because I preferred the hammer weapons anyway and the base damage on the wood mallet was still pretty good. I took the fighter perk and the minor perk 
Afterwards, it was time for the lovely Easter event. So I went to Pierre here, and he was selling strawberry seeds for 25 gold. Normally, he sells them for 100 gold, but because the discount rates were so low, we were actually able to afford a few strawberry seeds. I only bought 25 because the strawberries weren't going to sell for a whole lot of money, and they make for really nice loved gifts as well. So I was victorious today. I was awarded with the straw hat. Day number 14. Let's have a look at the quest board. Clint was looking for a leak. He was offering... 180 gold for a leak. How could I say no? With the money that I assembled, I got my first backpack upgrade. That was badly needed in terms of inventory management. I also gave Haley a daffodil today because it was her birthday. So that was a few friendship points with the lovely Haley. It was time to go back into the mines. I met a bomb. Blew up a ton of gold ores here. I got loads of gold back, which was great. I'm pretty sure at this stage in the game, I could use gold bars to make a lot of rings that I could sell to Marilyn for some decent profits. I also got a diamond on floor 86 and two more diamonds on floor 89. I got super lucky with diamonds. Unfortunately, the diamonds don't sell for what they used to. Tempered broadsword on floor 90. That was a pretty nice weapon upgrade, so I swapped out my wood mallet for that. I went back to Marlin as well and I sold him the burglar shanks, 200 each, 150 for the wood mallet. So I was pretty happy with those results. On day number 15, it was back into the mines. I was very close to floor 100. When I got to floor 100, I did get the star drop, which not only refills my energy to the top, but it also increases my maximum energy. I was super happy with that. I moved my furnaces up to the mines as well, started smelting some bars. Got down to floor 110, and I got a weapon here called the Slammer. I was very happy with this. It's a super powerful weapon. Probably one of the best weapons you can get before you get into the Galaxy tier and Infinity tier weaponry. Day number 16, time for another quest. Clint was offering 360 gold just to inspect 35 copper ores. You actually get to keep the ores, which is great. Went up to Marilyn too, sold him a few weapons he didn't need. And I gave Clint the copper ores at the end of the day for him to inspect. That was an easy 360 gold right there. I was very happy with that. Day number 17, look at all these lovely spring forgeables. Going to pick up all these forgeables. Try to increase my foraging skill now as quickly as I can. If I can get the three fertilizers, I can start prepping for kegs later on as well very early. I made tons of spring seeds. Couldn't convert them into tea saplings straight away though. Got Clint to upgrade my axe to a copper axe. I'll have that in a couple of days. And I was back down in the mines farming iron ore and I was also farming dust sprites because I really wanted that burglar ring. Of course, it wouldn't be a day in the mines without getting a diamond. The trend continues. <laughs> I did get a coffee bean, though, so I planted that. Clint wanted to inspect more copper ores, 300 gold on delivery. How could we refuse such an easy quest? So it was back to into the mines. I was killing rock crabs, farming copper ores. If I came across slime and bug meat, it just meant more sturdy rings for me. I sold a pile more weapons to Marlin that I got from killing monsters and from hitting open barrels. So the money was starting to flow, which was nice. It was Pam's birthday today. I gave her a parsnip. I was going to buy her a beer, but there was no point getting her the beer because she loves parsnips as well. And I might as well try to save as much money as I possibly could. I also gave Clint the copper ores I mined up for inspection. And it was a handy 300 gold from him right back into the wallet. So I went back to the mines as well. And it was time to smelt more ores into bars. Day 19, another quest appeared. Willie wanted me to catch four herrings. I could keep the herrings too, which was great. So I could sell those for extra money. It was time to complete the spring crops bundle. The potato, the cauliflower, the parsnip, and the green bean. As a reward, got back 20 speak rows. I was very happy with that. I also completed the treasure hunters bundle because I had all the materials from the mines. And I also completed the adventures bundle because I had the mats from killing monsters. And the blacksmiths bundle. That was all bundles completed to unlock the minecarts for fast travel around Stardew Valley, which is going to save me a ton of time in the future. Once that room was completed, the Junimos appeared, showered me with praise, and then it was straight into Clint's to get my copper axe. The reason why I went for an early axe upgrade is because I wanted to start cutting down trees earlier rather than later. So I had assembled a lot of diamonds. It was time to make some rings of Yoba using diamonds, gold bars, and iron bars. The ring of Yoba sells for 750 gold to pop, so it was another nice way to make some cash. I was looking to get into the desert as quickly as possible. The rings of Yoba would help me get there. I was up now at 15,570 odd gold. Very happy with that. I forgot that monsters spawned on the farm, so that bat actually took me by surprise, but I one-shotted it when it got into range. Level 5 foraging, we're going to go with gatherer. Chance for the double harvest and forge items is a no-brainer at this stage. 
So I bought a beer of Gus today because it was Shane's birthday and I wanted to give him a loved gift because I think Shane rocks and he deserves a beer for his hard work. <laughs> Three out of eight hearts for Shane and another daily quest. 360 gold if we can kill two rock crabs for Demetrius, which would be easy enough as well. Once I fished up the four herrings, I had a chat with Willie here. He was pretty impressed, but more importantly, he gave me money to catch some fish that I could keep. You just couldn't ask for better than that. 120 gold in the bag from Willie. Thank you very much, Willie. There was a few quests here to do. Jody wanted a cauliflower, for example. And I also had to find some evasive crab species and kill those. I went down into the later floors here to fight the lava crabs. Killed those, no problem at all. I just had to talk to Demetrius now to get my 360 gold reward. It was time to complete more bundles. I finally had the 500 sap assembled for the sticky bundle from cutting down a ton of trees. My reward was a charcoal kennel. Not too bad, especially if I need a coal later on. I also had enough stuff assembled from going to the beach all the time to finish off the crab pot bundle. My reward for that was three crab pots. And I actually set those up on the beach. Day 21, it's another quest. Leah wanted a red mushroom. 225 gold. Easy enough. I had tons of mushrooms from going into the mines. Doing all these quests is going to save me a ton of time in the long run, especially when it comes to accumulating friendship points. This is a very fast way to do it. The reason why I was doing so many quests is because it was actually profitable, because selling crops was just not worth the time effort at this moment in time. Day 21, I'm clearing everything from the beach farm, trees, rocks, you name it, it was going to go. So, there was a quest here, six red slimes, 750 gold, that was going to be prioritised. I also went to Caroline today as well, and I finally got into her sunroom from giving her daffodils all the time. I didn't show a whole lot of footage from that, but you just need two hearts with Caroline to get into the sunroom and she will teach you the tea sapling the next day. I also got the mushroom cave from Demetrius because mushrooms are more profitable than the bat cave. Crates do turn up on the beach farm occasionally. You can get some decent stuff in those crates. Retaining soil is handy. Sometimes you can even get coffee and triple shot espressos. Day 23, it was time to harvest the lovely cauliflowers. I also made some tea saplings here as well from the fibre, wood and spring wild seeds that I have assembled. So I'm going to sell all those today. Back down into the mines as well, of course. And I was just looking for resources in general. But more importantly, six red slimes were the target. Killed those. Spoke to the mayor and I got my prize money. I made even more tea saplings by the end of today just to sell those. I also made trap bobbers because I had some copper and sap lying around the place. So I decided to make loads of trap bobbers and sell those. See how much I'd get for those. I made 30, almost 34,000 gold today. A trap bobber sells for 200 gold, which was absolutely amazing. They were very easy to make. I just needed sap and copper bars for those. With all the money I had assembled, it was time to unlock the desert. I actually couldn't believe I managed to unlock it in spring with the discount rate of only 25%, but we pulled it off. Day 24, went to the flower dance, got a tub of flowers, also purchased the rare crow because I needed all of those for perfection. And Haley decided to dance with me because I was working on her a lot, getting her up to the four hearts needed to go on the flower dance. Day 25, the strawberries we planted were ready to be harvested. So I harvested all of these lovely 25 strawberries in total. I would sell a few of those. I'll also keep a few as well as gifts. Another quest today. Elliot wanted an iron bar. 360 gold. That was a no-brainer. Couldn't go to the desert today because Pam doesn't actually work on the 25th of spring. <laughs> so it was back to the regular mines. Took out my frustration on these poor dust sprites. I still needed a maximum kill count of 500 to get the burglar ring. So why not? Floor 62 was an ambush floor, so I was probably going to farm this floor for the whole day. Day number 26, it is Pierre's birthday. I just gave him a daffodil, I didn't have any loved gifts for him. I also went to the desert today. I bought some warp totems because it is very expensive for me at the moment to go to the desert as a ticket costs 500 gold. I went down to floor 13 here though, got some energy tonics, super happy with that. The goal was to get past floor 25 to get 10,000 gold from Key on the first day inside the skull cavern i made it down to floor 39 super happy with that the slammer wasn't too great when it came to fighting the enemies but it did the job when it got into a pinch gave jordan the cauliflower that was another 350 gold for me i also went to clint i wanted him to upgrade my pickaxe to a steel pickaxe so i could do more effective skull cavern runs the steel pickaxe would two shot the nodes which was handy it was emily's birthday today 
gave her an amethyst. She was super happy with that. That got her straight up the tree hearts. With Emily. Spent the rest of the day cutting down some trees to make more space on the farm. But more importantly, to get more sap and wood. Day 28 begins with 10,000 gold from the lovely Mr. Key from getting past 425 in the Skull Cavern. Super happy with that. Harvested my first few coffee beans, planted those down straight away to expand my coffee empire. Went to Robin as well today. It was time to get a farm building placed. It was a choice between the coop and the barn. It was going to be chickens or cows. Which one were we going to go with first? I decided to go with the chickens first. I'm just going to put the coop beside my farmhouse here. And I was going to get one of each coop animal to go in there, just to make perfection a bit easier. I had some wood to spare, so I fixed the bridge down by the beach. George wanted me to fish up an octopus, 450 gold. An octopus is one of the hardest things you can fish up in this game, it's ferociously hard. I also went to Pierre too, because it was the start of summer. And I just purchased one of each crop that he had. I also purchased a couple of saplings too to make future community centre bundles a little bit easier to complete because I went with the mushroom cave and not the bat cave. I got my steel pickaxe off Clint today. I purchased an ice cream as well. And the reason for this is for Demetrius' upcoming birthday. I also needed an ice cream for the community centre bundle. I fished up the super rare Dorado and I also got the sturgeon as well. I needed the sturgeon for the community centre bundle. I also needed the sturgeon for caviar. So, that was another bundle completed there, that was the Lakefish bundle. As a reward, I got a dressed spinner, and that sells for 500 gold, I was super happy with that. Day 30, we are fishing, so I was actually looking for octopus. And I did encounter one a few times, but I failed miserably. So I just spent the rest of the day fishing, just to see if I can increase my fishing skill to get a bigger fishing bar. I also wanted money to get an Iridium fishing rod so I can use a trap bobber, which would give me a much higher chance to get those ferociously hard fishes. Day 31, we built a barn. I also bought a chicken here as well off Marnie. What are we going to call the chicken? What theme are we going to use? Let's call the first chicken Rick. Can you guess the theme? <laughs> You'll guess it with the next uh, coop animal for sure. Gus wanted a red snapper, 150 gold. To get a red snapper, it had to be raining on a summer day. I finished off the summer foraging bundle as well. So that was going to give me lovely 30 summer seeds ready to go. I made tons of trap bobbers today from a huge accumulation of copper bars and sap. I actually ran out of copper bars there. Back into the mines, got a diamond, wouldn't be a day in the mines without getting one of course. I felt like the game was teasing me with diamonds because they just sold for pennies instead of the usual 750 gold because of the discount rate that I selected. <laughs> but the fishing tackles were saving the day. 500 gold for dress spinners, 200 gold each for trap bobbers. That put me up to almost 4600 gold. So I got more coffee beans today, day 32. And I even went to Gus. I spent most of my money on salads because I wanted to do a proper Skull Cavern run and I needed some decent health food. So it was down at the Skull Cavern. Today wasn't a great day. I did come across a few Iridium nodes, but not a whole lot. I was hoping for the Prismatic Shard, but I didn't get lucky today at all. So, day 33, it was time to smelt those bars. I made some dress spinners from cloth I got from killing mummies. Sold all those dress spinners. They sell for 500 gold a pop. So I was going to get some real nice money from that. Down to Cinder Sap Forest, I was cutting down some trees to get more wood. But more importantly, to get more sap. Because we can make more tackle with sap and copper bars. The Iridium bars didn't sell for what it used to. But they will sell for all right money later on in the game when we assemble loads of them. Made 10,000 gold today. Made some money from the Iridium bars, which wasn't too bad. And from the dress spinners and the trap bobbers. So the fishing tackles are just coming in so handy. Thank God they didn't get reduced in price. So I went to purchase a cow today for two reasons. Number one, I needed milk for community centre bundle. And number two, I needed cheese. Cheese is actually a really good food too for health and stamina. So that was a lovely cow added to our lovely farm. So I went with a silo today just to make feeding the animals a little bit easier. Especially if it rains, they won't go outside to eat food, so they would get cranky and I would lose friendship points with the animals. So a silo was needed. Went back to Clint and I decided to get my axe upgraded to a steel axe. So he'll have that done in a couple of days. Back down into the mines, I was farming more dust sprites. I really wanted that burglar ring. So I was getting closer to the 500 kill count that I needed. Another quest today. Clint wanted a cactus fruit, 225 gold. 
That was a nice easy quest because I had access to the desert. Getting the cactus fruit wouldn't be a problem at all. Down into the Skull Cavern and today was a great day. I got lots of Iridium Ore. I made it down quite deep and I even managed to nab a few prismatic shards as well which means I'd be able to upgrade my weapon to a galaxy sword which makes life a lot easier. Smelted all those ores into bars and I'd probably sell most of those too to make some extra money. Day 36 I got my steel axe back off Clint. Super happy with that. But we weren't finished with Clint, we had a quest to do. So we gave him the cactus fruit and we got 225 gold for that quest completion. Super happy with that. It was Gus's birthday today. I gave him a diamond because he loves those and I had diamonds to burn because they kept going into the Skull Cavern in the mines. With my steel axe I was able to get access to the secret woods. So I went into the secret woods, got all of the tree stumps which gave me back hardwood and now it was time to make some processing machines. So I made a mayonnaise machine, I made a preserve jar. I also made a recycling machine as well and I made a couple of tappers so I could start getting some resins earlier rather than later. The more resins I got the easier it was going to be. I made some regular spinners today just using iron bars and I sold all these. These will sell for 250 gold a piece. Not as good as the dress spinner but I didn't have cloth so I just had to settle for those regular spinners instead. That night I went to the desert got my galaxy sword so I was super happy with that. That was a huge weapon upgrade. I also got a barn upgrade on day 37, just so I could unlock more animals to add to the farm, like the goat for example. I went to Marlin too and I sold him some stuff that I got from the Skull Cavern from slain enemies and hitting open barrels. Back down into the regular mines today, and yeah, you guessed it, it was dust sprites. And just there we completed, finally, the monster eradication goal for the dust sprites, which means we can now get our hands on the burglar ring, so Gil will have that for us. More coffee beans today. Our coffee farm is getting a lot bigger, which is great. I also got rid of all the large tree stumps on the farm, just to free up more space for future projects. It was Marnie's birthday today. I gave her a strawberry. She was super happy with that because Marnie loves strawberries. Demetrius loves strawberries as well, of course. It was time to go to my primary source of income, the Adventurer's Guild. I got my burglar ring. This was going to be a game changer as this doubles a lot of the loot drops you can get from enemies. So, it was time for the Luau, and I had a gold star sturgeon ready to go. It's one of the best things you can put into this Luau. The governor was super happy with that, but more importantly, I was going to get tons of friendship points with a lot of the NPCs around Stardew Valley. So today was a fantastic day. Day number 40, I collected some iron bars. It was time to craft some lightning rods. I made 27 lightning rods because the next day was a stormy day, and I wanted to get some battery packs just to have them lying around the place if I needed them going forward. I purchased a goat today, 4,000 gold, not bad. I placed the lightning rods around the greenhouse here. I thought it looked kind of cool. <laughs> Level 10 mining finally, we're going to go with blacksmith. Metal bars worth 50% more, so I'll get a little bit more bang for my buck for those iridium bars. Day 41, I picked up some melons here and it was time for another regular quest. Clint was looking to inspect even more copper ores. I think he has a bit of a problem when it comes to the copper ores. But we accepted it because it was money. It was Alex's birthday today, so I gave him an egg because he actually likes eggs. Didn't have any loved gifts, but that was okay. I still got three hearts with him. Back down into the mines to get the copper ores for Clint to inspect. But we also killed insects when we saw them for bug meat and slimes, of course, for two reasons. One, for sturdy rings, and two, for the 1000 slime monster eradication goal. I met a few more sturdy rings today, so we're going to sell those to Marlin to get some more money. So day 42, the storm was over. I got some battery packs, which is really nice, 12 in total. From going to the Skull Caverns and the Secret Woods, I finally had enough fiddlehead ferns amassed to complete the Wild Medicine Bundle, which rewarded me with two cookout kits, which was pretty cool because I didn't have a house upgrade yet, so if I needed to cook something up, they'd come in handy. Also completed the Summer Crops Bundle, got awarded with a quality sprinkler, which I couldn't actually use, that was a bit sad. So Willie wanted me to fish up two pikes, offering 200 gold as a reward. I wasn't going to turn that down. Spent a day fishing trying to get some pikes. Once I got two pikes, it would be down to Willie to get that lovely prize. I got a cool cutscene here with Haley. She lost her lovely pendant in the sand. Got that for her for some extra friendship points. Haley really appreciated my efforts, which was great. And of course, yes, you guessed it, we were going to marry Haley in this challenge. She is the wife to be. Willie was super happy with the pikes and Clint was super happy with the copper ores. So it was easy money all around Pelican Town. So for the fishing I got 200 gold which was really nice and for gathering the ores I got 360 gold. 
It was back to Marilyn. I sought him some boots I got from killing monsters, weapons from barrels, and sturdy rings that I crafted from slain enemies. Day 43 was a rainy day, so I pulled up a few more catfish just to have them handy if any quests popped up. And I also needed to get some other fish as well during the summer. The red snapper, for example, was one fish that I wanted to complete another bundle here. So that was the ocean fish bundle completed. I was rewarded with war totems to the beach. Didn't actually use those at all. I think I just ended up selling those. <laughs> Help wanted. The lovely wizard Rasmodius was offered 700 gold for killing monsters known as squid kids. They can be super rare or super common depending on your luck when you go into the mines. It wouldn't be a day in the mines without getting a diamond, of course, which I just got there. And we were hunting for some more squid kids, followed by more diamonds. Look at all the diamonds I get today. They just keep popping up. And the reason for this is because I set the profit margin to 25%, so the game knows I can't sell them to make loads of money. But what the game doesn't know is that I can forge them into rings and make loads of money. That was even more diamonds right there. So I set up some trees here, one of each for oak resin pine tar and maple syrup and I put some tappers on those spoke to the wizard another 700 gold in the bag for killing those squid kids look at all the coffee beans I'm gonna get today tons of coffee right now later on it was milking the animals I wasn't a fan of milking the animals I was praying for an auto grabber come skull cavern time please god give me an auto grabber soon but it was time to upgrade another building so we went with the big coop Day 45, another quest. Rasmodius wanted our services again. He wanted us to kill two ghosts, offering some decent money for that. We completed the children's bundle and we got three battery packs as a reward. It was also Sam's birthday, so we gave him a cactus fruit because he loves those. That was nice friendship points with Sam. So I found the ghost down in the mines that was one dead and this is the second ghost in the bag. Went back to the wizard, he was super happy with that. That was a nice... 500 gold in the bag just for killing those two ghosts. Day 46, it's another quest. Elliot wanted us to fish up an octopus this time for 450 gold. So, it was time to get the Iridium Rod. Huge investment, but it does pay off eventually because we have that rod for the rest of the Perfection series. The octopus only turns up on summer mornings, so I was too late coming down to the beach today, but that didn't stop me from taking on some of the harder fish down here. For example, the legendary Crimson Fish. I managed to pull that one up out of the water and that actually sold for 703 gold which I wasn't too bad at all so I was going to sell that for some nice money. So I got a large egg today that was great incubated that just to get another chicken I was hoping for a brown chicken not a white chicken if I got a white chicken I'd more or less sell that one until I got a brown chicken. So I was doing more fishing today I finally got the octopus after a ferocious battle gave that to Elliot that was another quest completed 450 gold in the bag for that octopus I was super happy with that it was Demetrius's birthday today give him an ice cream because Demetrius loves ice cream who doesn't love ice cream in all fairness <laughs> so it was time to make more rings of yoba I had diamonds I had gold bars I had iron bars I made loads of rings of yoba I'm gonna sell those now to Marilyn for lots and lots of money 750 gold for each one of these rings I was super happy with that that was gonna get me right up over the 10k mark so it could do more upgrades no problem on the farm almost 15,000 gold right there from that Shane wanted a largemouth bass today 300 gold for that I wasn't going to say no I got Robin to build a fish pond as well 5,000 gold for the fish pond the reason for this being is I needed a caviar you know to get perfection so I decided to get that set up now rather than worry about that later on I gave Shane the fish got 300 gold added to the wallet super happy with that with the money I had left over, I decided to get the last bag pack upgrade now. There was other stuff I could have done with the money, but I might as well just get this out of the way. So I got an ancient seed from killing enemies, and I got the recipe then off Gunther for handing them in the ancient seed. It was time to get Clint to break open some geodes so I could hand in even more artifacts to Gunther because I wanted to get access to the sores as quickly as possible so I could get access to the resources down there. Crobus, for example. Day 49, look at all the coffee beans we are getting now. We have tons of coffee beans inside the chest, almost over a thousand. I also went to the desert, traded in my jades for staircases. That was 22 staircases ready to go. So it was back into the Skull Cavern. And I was looking for everything I could sell, to be honest. Iridium ores, prismatic shards, any sort of materials I'd get my hands on, I'd sell for money. I got level 10 combat, we're going to go with brute 15% more damage. 
Day number 50, we were halfway through the challenge. I picked up dark boots inside the Skull Cavern. They were a huge upgrade from the work boots, so I swapped those out straight away. So I'm smelting bars today, iridium bars, with the blacksmith perk. I was actually getting some decent money for those. I also gave the dwarf an aquamarine today because it was his birthday. George wanted a flounder, 300 gold, how could I refuse? He was down to the beach to fish up a flounder. The very first catch of the day was in fact a flounder. So I went straight up to George, gave him that for another handy dandy 300 gold in the bag. Back to into the mines, of course it wouldn't be a day in the mines if I didn't get a diamond. <laughs> the game has just thrown these diamonds at me. I did make 7 crystallarium, so it was time to get some diamond processing underway. I tried to storage it into the fish pond as well so I can get some caviar later on. So all these crystallariums will be filled up with diamonds for now because the rings of Yoba were proven to be super valuable. Fished up a super cucumber as well on day 51 that night. Sell that for some money. I got level 10 fishing finally. Go with angler. Fish worth 50% more. It's better than fish not worth 50% more. <laughs> I sold a load of stuff today, including 28 iridium bars, so I made some nice money. So Gus wanted a jade off me today, but he was offering 600 gold. That was actually pretty good. It was Willie's birthday today, so I gave him a catfish because he loves those. That was some nice friendship points accumulated with Willie. It was time to purchase a duck today because the coop had been upgraded to a big coop. And we're going to call this duck Marty. <laughs> so you can probably guess the theme there for what we're going to do with the coop animals. I also paid 10,000 gold and 450 pieces of wood for the house upgrade so I can make the house a little bit bigger. I met some dress spinners as well today. They were going to sell for 500 gold to pop. It ran out of cloth though. So with the rest of the metals, I just made regular spinners. A new baby chick had hatched. This was going to be the chicken that we incubated. This chicken was going to be called bird person. <laughs> I also made a bee house because I got a maple syrup off the tapper there uh, from the tree on the top right hand side of the farm. So that was going to be honey in a couple of days from that for a community centre bundle. I gave Gus the jade he wanted so that was going to give me some nice money there and it was off to Clint to get him to process 57 Omni Geos to see if I can get some decent stuff inside. But I just wanted to get down into the sores so I didn't mind spending some money to get all those broken open. So we are in the Skull Cavern, breaking up some ores, trying to get down as deep as possible to get some of the goodies. But to be honest, the main reason I came here a lot was I was trying to get auto petters and auto grabbers, but I wasn't getting great luck. I did get a curiosity lore though from those crates, so I sold that. Gunther visited me the next day, he gave me the key to the sores, and then it was off to Pierre, I was going to purchase wheat here. Because I needed a hundred wheat flour for one bundle. I wasn't going to buy a hundred wheat flour because it was a hundred gold for each wheat flour. Pierre was just ripping me off. So instead, I decided to get some wheat and just grow it on the farm and process that into wheat flour eventually. So my house had been upgraded. It is now bigger. Now it looks much prettier. Day 55, we are watering crops. We're watering wheat. Eventually, I will make a mill. And I'll turn all this wheat into wheat flour for a community centre bundle. Way cheaper to do it this way, you know, rather than just buy the wheat flour directly from Pierre. The Sturgeons wanted a diamond. They got it since I had diamonds to burn. It was then after Robin to make the mill. I had some cloth from the mummies, so I was able to make that mill no problem at all. So it was back into the mines. I made more rings of yoba from the diamonds that I got, and I made more dress spinners as well. And with the rest of the bars, I made some regular spinners. This was by far the best way to get money to get upgrades done on the farm. I didn't even want to think about the gold clock at this stage in the game. How I was going to make millions of gold with a 25% discount rate, I don't know. But it will be interesting to find out how we tackle that in the future. So look at all the lovely diamonds today on day number 56. Tons of diamonds. I got some raw off the storage and put that into the... Preserve jar here, that's going to give me a caviar in a couple of days. I also went to the travelling cart merchant here and I purchased a rare seed just so I can get my hands on that star drop at the end of fall. And we finished up today by going to the uh, the nice event here. The Moonlight Jellies is one of my favourite events because it's just so colourful and so vibrant. So that finishes out summer. So we were getting there with this hardcore challenge. It was the first day of fall and it starts off by collecting lovely battery packs. And these battery packs are going to come in super handy later on if I decide to make iridium sprinklers, for example, or if I decide to make more crystallariums. 
So I purchased a few pumpkin seeds off Pierre because I needed a few of those for quests. I also got one of each other crop that he had just to make perfection go a little bit smoother. So it was back to the community center. We done the fall foraging bundle and that netted us 30 fall seeds, which was really nice. I didn't actually plant those. I just sold those. I did fish up a salmon though and I got a few other goodies as well that night. Day 58, I got a load of wheat, a hundred to be exact. Put that into the mill that will be turned into wheat flour. I made two cheese presses as well today from the resources in the mines. So I can start converting the milk that I'm getting from the goat and the cow into cheese. For community centre bundles, but also for healing food later on in the game. It comes in super handy. It was Penny's birthday today. So just for her, I went out to the desert, fished up a sandfish because she absolutely loves those. I also picked up a quest here from Willy. He was looking for a copper bar, offering 180 gold, no problem. Special Orders quest board has now been activated. I went with aquatic overpopulation here with Demetrius, so it was Midnight Carps that he wanted. Gave Penny the birthday gift, she was super happy with that. That was more friendship points with her. I also gave Woody the copper bar, that was more friendship points with him, but more importantly, more money in my pocket. Spent the rest of the evening fishing up Midnight Carp to do that aquatic overpopulation quest for Demetrius. So I got back a hundred wheat flour, which was great. I also fished up a walleye, which I also needed for the community centre bundle. So I finally got some cheese here. That was the artisan bundle completed. I was rewarded with a cake. I was actually super happy about the cake there because I still didn't have farming level 8. That was the quality fish bundle on there with the walleye. And I also needed the tiger trout for the river fish bundle. There was one bundle left to do and that was the night fishing bundle and that just required a second walleye. And that was all of the bundles completed for the fish tank which was great. So we were getting one step closer to completing the community center. The home cooks bundle, we needed 10 eggs, 10 milks and 100 flour. So that was another easy bundle done. The reward there was five complete breakfasts. I was super happy with that. Alex actually loves complete breakfasts, so I could always work on Alex with those. So I put some hops into the keg to make a pale ale, which I needed for a quest with Pam. And I gave Haley a rabbit's foot that I got from killing a serpent in the Skull Cavern today. I spent that night fishing up more midnight carps to complete the aquatic overpopulation quest. I only got 560 gold for completing it though because the quest is an accumulation of what the midnight carps are actually worth. The next day we finally get our caviar. This is needed for the final bundle but it's good to have it now just to get it out of the way. I also needed one more caviar to sell for perfection as well. So Rasmodius wanted a red mushroom for himself. He was after some gold for that. No problem Rasmodius. Got some diamonds and I also went for another barn upgrade. This was a deluxe barn upgrade, which means once that is done, we could get some pigs. I gave Rasmoris the red mushroom and I also gave him a void essence to accumulate more friendship points. I also put up the angler legendary fish today that sell for a nice bit of money. And I went down into the stores and I also got the mutant car, which is another fairly easy catch. So I got the pale ale today from the keg. I also got some honey, which means we could tackle more community center bundles. Gave Pam the pale ale, she was super happy with that. Don't know if it was a good idea to give it to her just before work though. But Pam is a responsible person of course. Back down into the mines, and of course it wouldn't be a day in the mines if we didn't come across a diamond. Day 62, yes Clint is looking for more copper ores. I don't know what his fascination is with the copper ores, but he's offering money. So we will take on the job of course. Showed Clint the ores again. I mean, how much could have changed Clint within the last couple of days, in all fairness? But we won't complain. Back down into the mines, and we were just farming stimes, farming resources in general, of course. I got a prismatic shard off a rock crab. Never got one off a rock crab before. I got one off a green slime, a blue slime, all the slimes. Never got one off a rock crab. So I was super happy with that from getting the prismatic shard off of a crab type enemy. So, day 63 was a rainy day. Willie wanted me to get four red snappers. He was only offered 200 gold for him, but you know what? I said, why not? I needed a break from the old mines. So, I spent a good portion of the day pulling those red snappers up out of the ocean. And that was another nice 200 gold from Willie. I also gave him a, a sea cucumber that I caught as well for some extra friendship points. Day 64, look at our lovely fall forgeables. Harvested all those, and of course, I'll sell those. Give Marnie some amaranth because she wanted those for her cows that was another quest completed also gave her a diamond to increase friendship points so i could sneak into her room and pick up 
Mary Lewis's lucky purple shorts. Today we are going with fragments of the past and that was going to be a lovely easy quest to complete. We also give Lewis the shorts and I was going to put them on display but you know what? 750 gold is a bit too good to pass up so I just gave him the shorts straight away. Back into the Mines of Farm skeletons, more diamonds were given of course. Uh, but more importantly, I wanted bone fragments. I needed 100 in total to complete the quest. Skeletons can drop bone swords. They sell for 250 gold a pop. So it was totally worth coming down farming these. I also needed to kill some of these for a monster eradication goal as well. So it was basically hitting multiple birds with the one stone. Day 65, more diamonds for me. Super happy with all the diamonds I was getting. 270 gold Leah was offering for a hazelnut. I also got some wool hair from Emily in the mail. So that finished off the animal bundle, and as a reward, I got another cheese press, which I put down inside the barn. I finally had the wild plums assembled for the forager's bundle. That was another bundle done. Reward was friendship, which was nice, we won't turn that down. And we also got three tappers as well, which was great. So it was back into the mines. We were slaying more skeletons. We were getting close now to the 100 bone fragments. Gave those into Gunther, and as a reward, we got... 3500 gold, I was super happy with that. Finally, some decent money from a quest. I came out of there with three bone swords in total and some glorians on her bits and bobs. Sold all those to Marilyn, got my money up to almost 18,000. Purchased a pig today off Marilyn, 16,000 gold, but I needed it because I needed a truffle for a community center bundle. Later on that day, there was another help wanted quest. Four red slimes, the reward was 500 gold. We spent the rest of the day in the mines killing red slimes just to complete that quest. The next day, we got another quest from Harvey to get a catfish. He was offering 600 gold. We also gave Jordy rabbit's foot here as well because it was her birthday. That got us straight up to 4 to 10 hearts with Jordy. I also spoke to Lewis about the red slimes. And that gave me 500 gold for that. Super happy there. And we gave Harvey his catfish, which was even more money in the bag. Back down to the mines, and I was slaying more slimes, more void spirits for primarily monster eradication goals, which I just completed one there for the void spirits. Super happy there. 500 gold been offered from Rasmordius to slay two more ghosts, so we'll take him up on the offer. I also give Haley a bouquet today, just to speed up the old relationship process, because we wanted to marry Haley as quickly as possible. I purchased a void egg off Krobus to put a void chicken into the coop. Back down into the mines on day 68. Wouldn't be a day in the mines without getting the diamond, of course. Super lucky here, floor 56 was an ambush floor, so I could farm this floor for the whole day if I wanted to accumulate kill counts and slimes. It was time to finish off the dye bundle by putting in an amaranth. We were now one step closer to completing the community centre. As a reward, we got a seed maker, which is pretty nice. It was Abigail's birthday today. We gave her an amethyst, of course, because she loves those. More friendship points with the lovely Abigail. It was time to smelt tons and tons of copper bars, because I wanted to make tons of tappers. Later on that day, I went back into the skull cavern, and when I got to the first floor, tons of serpents came out of nowhere and tried to ruin my day. However, I had the galaxy sword. I was in good hands. Once I killed all these serpents, I did pick up a red cabbage seed, which is pretty rare. That is a year two crap. I got an infested floor to run with dinosaurs. I actually killed all these dinosaurs just for monster eradication goals. Day 71, and something super weird happened on my farm. My fully matured sheep turned blue. I had no idea how this happened, as I have no mods to my knowledge that make my sheep blue, so I shared it to see what happens, and it turned white again. So I'm going to need to keep playing that sheep and make sure it doesn't turn blue again. <laughs> so I finally finished off the fall crops bundle. I was getting closer to unlocking the greenhouse. There's one bundle left. Got another bee house, which was nice. It was time to cook up some stuff for some bundles. I cooked up a fried egg, and I also cooked up a mackie roll, because I purchased some rice off Pierre and his shop. I already had the fish and the seaweed to make the rest of it. I made some tree fertilizers as well today. It was time to set up some decent tree farms. Back up to the mines and I made 49 tappers in total. I do make more later on. It was day 72 time for the Stardew Valley Fair. I was pretty confident with the items I put into the display but I only got third place. That didn't matter though because I just gambled on my star tokens on green. Once I had enough star tokens acquired, I purchased the rare crow, and I also purchased the star job, which increases my maximum energy again, which was pretty nice. Day 73, look at all the seeds that I've put down here. I'm going to put tree fertilizer on all these, but I'm also going to put some padding down, so that the breed doesn't grow between these seeds to make my life difficult. I also give Marnie a diamond, because it was her birthday today, and she loves diamonds, so that's 6 out of 10 hearts with Marnie. 
lots of rewards off guild today, including the Slime Charmer Ring. I was super happy with that. I also got some other good stuff too. I equipped the mask. I thought the mask was pretty cool. I also equipped the Slime Charmer Ring. So I was happy with my ring outputs at the moment. Almost 13,000 gold made today from primarily selling Iridium Bars. You can't really see it there, but it's just primarily Iridium Bars and some diamonds. Another chicken hatch, we're going to call this one Summer. And this is a white chicken. <laughs> so we had a white, a brown, a white chicken and a duck in our lovely coop at the moment. All we were missing was a rabbit and a dinosaur to complete the collection. I did have a dinosaur egg from killing those dinosaurs in the Skull Cavern though. So I decided to incubate that next. That will take almost 12 days to incubate, but it'll be worth it because we can start making some dinosaur mayonnaise then, which we'll need for a bundle down the road. So it was after Robin. This time it was to get a coop upgrade to Deluxe Coop. It was also time for more quests. Yes, finally, Emily was offering 2,250 gold for the diamond. I was so happy with this. This is the best quest you can get from this daily quest board. Um, I ran straight into the saloon. Give Emily the diamond and that was a whopping 2200 gold right there for that. I was so happy with that. Finally, my luck was starting to pay off. My sheep turned blue again today. It was so weird. I thought it was hilarious. Don't, I don't know why it was blue. Double checked my mods folder. No mods in there to enable blue sheep. If somebody knows what's going on, please tell me. Is there a chance you can get blue sheep in this game if you purchase a sheep from Marnie? Please let me know in the comments. As far as my knowledge goes, there isn't. All sheep are white. <laughs> Did I get a rare mutation? Who knows? So I completed the chef's bundle, got myself a pink cake. I then got invited over to Jody's, was told to bring a large amount of bass, trun that on the ground for Sam to pick up. Jody thought it was hilarious and I had a good night with the family. The next day I went to Gus and I purchased a spaghetti because Robin loves spaghetti and it was her birthday today. So I gave Robin a spaghetti and that got me a lot of friendship points with Robin, which was great. Went to the secret woods then, it was time to harvest more hardwood because the day to go to Ginger Island was coming up and I needed 200 hardwood to repair the hull for the ship. So it was time to accumulate that now. Day 78, another special orders quest was available. I was going to go with Gus's famous omelette because I had tons of chickens and ducks now and white chickens that generate eggs. That was going to be an easy one. I could finally complete the rare crops bundle because my ancient fruit had finally grown. As a reward, I got a preserved jar. I was kind of salty about that because it was an ancient fruit that I sacrificed, but what can you do? So, I had loads of eggs accumulated, put those into Gus's fridge. That did not complete the quest, though. In order to complete the quest, I also had to gather 24 eggs. So, that was going to take me a few days to get done. But it would be worth it at the end. So, I did the maths, and I realised that the making treasure hunters and spinners would be far more profitable than using the same resources to make rings of Yoba. So, I did just that. I made treasure hunters, and I made spinners. If I had cloth, I would have made dress spinners, but I didn't have a whole lot of cloth, so it was just regular spinners. So, from now on, I would just sell the diamonds the way they are. Any materials left over would be converted into dress spinners. If I didn't have the cloth, just regular spinners. And if I had gold bars... I could just use those to make treasure hunter tackles and sell those. And that paid off tremendously, netting me a huge profit here of 16,365 gold. Day 79, look at my magnificent tree farm. I had a tapper for every single one of these trees. There was 100 trees here in total that were going to generate oak resins for me. Because I figured that if I was going to get this gold clock later on, the way to do it would have been ancient fruit and star fruit. So kegs would have been the way to go. I also got some Omni Geodes here from my sturgeons, they're very picky indeed, <laughs> but the sturgeon pool is getting bigger. Clint wanted a topaz today, thank god, I was getting a bit worried about him there for a second, if he asked for more copper ore, I would have recommended him to Harvey, you know? <laughs> so I went to Marnie's today, it was time to get some animals, and this time it was the rabbit. 8,000 gold, it was expensive for us definitely, but we needed the rabbit. Main reason being, the rabbit generates wool and also generates the rabbit's foot, which is a universal loved gift for most of the NPCs. We call the rabbit bet. <laughs> so I used all my money today on day 80 to purchase star fruits. Got 116 star fruits. And we're going to set those up in the greenhouse. So instead of wasting time hoeing up the ground, I just put down some mega bombs just to blow open some patches. And I'll just use the hoe then just to fill out the rest of it. So this is a huge time saver, definitely worth it in my opinion. 
I put down quality sprinklers, followed by starfruit. I then went to the secret woods with my sweet gem berry and I got my lovely star drop. Another star drop in the bag, I was super happy with that. Willy wanted an earth crystal from the help wanted quests, so I obliged. Went to the old mariner to finally get the mermaid pendant, but I couldn't afford it, I was short a few hundred gold. So I sold a few things to Willy here, but that wasn't enough, I had to sacrifice something big. Went to Clint and I sold him one of my prismatic shards, that was going for 500 gold. Plus two amethysts, it just got me over the 5000 mark. Went back to the old mariner and I purchased the mermaid pendant. I just didn't know the next time I was going to get a rainy day. And I didn't have any rain totems and it doesn't rain in winter, so it was now or never. Haley, of course, said yes. It was time to get married and Haley would set everything up in three days, which was amazing. So I went to Willy, gave me his rock crystal, that was another quest complete. More money from the lovely Willy, thank you very much, Willy. 150 gold in the bag, put me back up to 645 gold. <laughs> we were just so poor right now. So this time I decided to replace the diamonds with jades. Made a huge mistake here. I should have pickaxed the diamonds out of the crystallariums, then put in the jades. But it was too late and I wasn't going to do a day reset. Because I decided against it when I started this challenge. Any mistakes I made, I would simply have to live with them. So that night it was off to the Halloween event. I was going to get the rare crow but I couldn't afford it. So I just settled with the jack-o'-lantern recipe instead for 2000 gold. I'd have to come back next year. I pick up that rare crow and make sure that I could afford it next year. I also got the golden pumpkin and I'll actually use that to give someone as a gift later on, maybe for someone's birthday. Day 84, I finally got married. I was so happy. Me and Haley for life. A lot of people don't like Haley, but if you give her a chance, she turns out to be a pretty interesting character. It's time for another quest. This time it was four chubs. The art of fishing for Willy, we would oblige of course, 200 gold for us, no problem at all. Spent a good portion of the day trying to fish up four chubs. They weren't as common as I thought they were, which was unfortunate, so it did take me quite some time to get those chubs all fished up for Willy. I finally got it done, it took me the bones of a whole day, which was a bummer. Definitely wasn't worth doing in terms of time consumption for 200 gold. Next up, I had a choice between Prismatic Jelly and Pierre's Prime Produce, went with Prismatic Jelly. Also completed the winter foraging bundle and I got 30 winter seeds back for that. More importantly, we just finished the remixed community center. I was super happy with that. It was actually the first time I think I completed a remixed community center um, run. So I was super happy with that. Back into the mines, we had a target, the prismatic slime. I found it on floor nine. I was super lucky with that. It takes quite the number of hits to destroy. But because I had the burglar ring, something really interesting happens when I do kill it. It actually dropped two prismatic jellies. Now, the second prismatic jelly, I believe, is useless. But you can always put it on display because it actually looks really cool. I gave the prismatic jelly to the wizard and he was super happy with that. How much did I get for completing that quest? 5,000 gold. Absolutely magnificent. I really needed that. I also got a really cool cutscene here for completing the community center. So that was another big challenge done. It was another quest today. Three pike this time from Willy. He was offering 300 gold. I said, why not? The quests were getting a bit stale now for me. They weren't giving me as much money as I needed. Fished up a squid as well. And I'm probably going to calm down with those daily quests because I have other areas of the game I can go to now to kind of get better money. So I gave Willy the squid. And as a reward, I was given 800 gold for that, which wasn't too shabby at all. I also got 2,500 gold on the next day from Pierre for completing the community center. Followed up by Monster Musk from the wizard, which makes monster eradication goals super easy. Pierre also sent me a notice to say he's now open seven days a week. And Robin sent me a lovely 50 wood in the mail. Super happy about that. Also collected some jades from the crystallariums. And then this happened. A new baby lizard has hatched. What are we going to call this one? We're going to call this one Jerry. So we now had the collection done. We had the white chicken, the brown chicken, the white chicken, the rabbit, the dinosaur, and the duck. We could of course go for the brown and the golden chickens later, but we had all the primary animals that we could get at the moment. So after a ferocious battle today, I finally fished up the glacier fish. Also went into the mutant bug lair, and I picked up the dark talisman. Did a bit of fishing here too, just for the fishing collection. I pulled up the slime jack from this place, which is a unique fish to this location. It was time for another quest, Rasmorius wanted us to kill two more ghosts, offering 500 gold, why not? 
Look at our lovely oak resin farm now. This is going to be 100 oak resins in total added to our inventory. Which means if we had the mats, we could make 100 kegs. And when we finally collect our star fruits, we could turn those into star fruit wines. So I was also back into the mines. We were looking for ghosts just to get that quest done. The next day, it was another quest from Harvey this time. He wanted an aquamarine, 540 gold. Why not? It was finally time to go to Ginger Island. Five iridium bars for the anchor, five battery packs for the machine, and 200 hardwood for the hull. Wood repaired his boat for us. We just had to go to sleep. And we could go to Ginger Island the next day if we so wished. I also paid a visit to the quarry cave here just to get my hands on that gold scythe. Because why not? It was a tool upgrade from the regular scythe. It does have a greater reach, does more damage, and it gives you back more stuff per swing. I also went outside when it was finished and I cleared off every single resource from this location. This was going to be a giant tree farm, but I wasn't going to set up tappers for these trees. I was just going to cut them all down if I needed extra wood going forward because I was going to need thousands of kegs if I was going to get this golden clock later on in our 100 day perfection series run. So tree fertilizers today. I'm going to grow up all these trees super fast. Then we're going to cut them all down. I also went over to Ginger Island. So the goal today in Ginger Island was to get enough golden walnuts to get into the house so we could sleep over here. So I'm just going to show you very quick highlights of myself getting all of the golden walnuts so I could hopefully make it into the house today. And these golden walnuts are hidden all over the place. But if you look very carefully, you'll actually see signs of places you can get them, for example. You might see a, a circle of stones, you know, so it's worth hoeing the centre of that to get one out of. You might see rough patches of dirt. You might see things that seem a bit out of place. Anything like that, normally, you're going to get something decent inside them. Most of the golden walnuts in the starter zone aren't that hidden, so you would find them occasionally. So, it was getting late, and I wasn't too sure if I was going to unlock the house by the end of today, because I didn't come here in the morning time. I actually came here in the afternoon. When I got access to this zone, which is the farm zone, or you could also call it the west zone of Ginger Island, I needed to locate 20 golden walnuts in total so I could get the parrots to fix up the house so I could sleep there. So I was really rushing against the clock. Fortunately, from doing this so many times, I knew where all the golden walnuts were and I knew from the counting off the top of my head that there were enough golden walnuts around these parts in order for me to assemble to get into the house before the day was finished. So this was golden walnut number 20, just up here, and that was it. Got the parts to fix up the house, it was half one, so I did it by literally the skin of my teeth. <laughs> what a day it was. Finally, we're on to day number 90, so I spent a good portion of today getting rid of all the resources on the farm, because I wanted to turn this Ginger Island farm into an actual crop farm, because I could put sprinklers down in Ginger Island at work. I then went into the volcano to get some more goodies, more golden walnuts, more resources, uh, more materials of course. I got a dwarf hammer there as well, that'll sell for a couple of hundred gold. It was 150, didn't have time to get the prismatic shard, so instead I ran out to the entrance, pulled the switch, opened the gate and passed out in style. That means when I come back here the next time I can just go through that door and get access to the forge area straight away and get the free prismatic shard. Caroline's birthday today, gave her a rabbit's foot, she was super happy with that. She was going to relax today, which was good. I did a desert trader as well. It was time to get more staircases with all the jades I had accumulated. 41 staircases today. It was, it was gearing up for a big skull cavern run. I also pulled a void salmon out of the water here, which I needed for the fish collection. We also need the void salmon for the missing bundle at the end as well. I gave the henchman here some void mayonnaise. That got him to move straight away down into the witch's hut here. And I got the magical ink, which means I can now access the wizard's magical terminal to make more advanced items. The only problem is that I was a good bit off affording any of these items. The gold clock, for example, 10 million gold. <laughs> no idea how I was going to get that. So, I went on day 92 to this event. I purchased the Snowman Rare Crow and I did the fishing event. I actually won that event, which was pretty cool. As a reward, I got a huge assortment of different fishing tackles which of course I would sell to make some decent money. So this event was actually worth going to. <laughs> I also got a sailor's cap as well, which was cool. It was time to do another quest. This time we'll go with Robin's Resource Rush to collect a thousand pieces of stone in a week. This is now super simple to do because the volcano dungeon gives you tons of stone. On floor two, I got a super rare mushroom floor. 
followed up by a dwarf dagger, I sell that for some money as well, that sell for 550 gold. Met up to the forge area again for my prismatic shard, it was time to enchant my weapon. What enchant was I going to get? I was hoping for the Crusader enchant, because that's one of the better ones, especially with the mummies and a lot of the undead monsters in the game. Got the Crusader enchant, I was super happy with that. I then decided to free Professor Snail, just to open up his artifact hunting quest on Ginger Island, which would give me access to more golden wallets, because I wanted to get into Key's um, golden walnut room, you know, as quickly as possible, so I can get those key quests get the key gems and start getting some really cool items from those. Spent the rest of the day running around Ginger Island getting more gold and walnuts. Headed back home too because it was Sebastian's birthday. Made some sashimi. Kept that to him because he loves that. And that got his heart up a good bit. I also went to the greenhouse as well. The star fruits are ready to go. I harvested all the star fruits and I was going to put all these into kegs to make star fruit wine. Now that will take a good few days but hopefully it will be worth it. I got to get Clint to upgrade my axe to a gold axe so I can be more efficient at cutting down trees. I also went to Sandy today to purchase as much star fruit as possible. Unfortunately, all I could afford was 49 star fruits because I didn't have a whole lot of money. I did do another skull cavern run today and I got super lucky. I got an auto grabber. So happy with that. Didn't have to milk the cows again or share the weird looking blue sheep. I could just let them be. I also got a lucky ring from a crate. Unfortunately, I didn't have my recording active when it popped out. Um, so you're just going to have to trust me that it did come out of a crate. It didn't actually spawn one in, I swear on my life. <laughs> that did come out of a crate 200%, I promise you. I did get a crystallarium as well for 48. It was a super lucky day today, you know. Look at all the iridium ores I'm going to get right now. There was iridium ores everywhere today i got down super deep i also killed the last rock crab needed for another monster eradication goal super happy with that i smelted all these lovely iridium ores into iridium bars I'm gonna sell all these bars to make loads of money so it was a great day so we are nearing the end of our first 100 days i will be doing a 200 day and a 300 day of this challenge uh, to see if i can actually get perfection using some of the hardest settings in the game the, the discount rate of 25 percent uh, it makes life so difficult. And then 96, we're back on Ginger Island, and I got really lucky here. Two golden walnuts from those clams. You can get five golden walnuts in total from those. I started merging rings together. I merged together the lucky ring along with the burglar ring, and I also merged together the phoenix ring along with the slime charm ring. I was hoping for a hot java ring, but I just haven't gotten that yet. It's one of the more rare rings to get. I did make loads of iridium sprinklers as well. I'm going to set those up over on Ginger Island. And I also sold tons of weapons here to Marin as well that I got from my travels in Skull Cavern, the regular mines, and the Volcano Dungeon. I got the Crab Shell Ring off Gil, sold that for a thousand gold, I was super happy with that. That me put right back up to over 10,000 gold. Got my gold axe off Clint as well on day 97, and I used Mega Bombs to blow open all of the trees in the quarry to get tons of wood and sap from this. So it was a time of gathering resources. Went to Gus, and the reason I went to Gus was to purchase a coffee. And the reason for that was that it was Harvey's birthday and he loves coffee. So it was a coffee for Harvey. If I had any brain in my head, I would have just made a coffee using the hundreds and hundreds of coffee beans that I had. But I just didn't think of it. <laughs> my bad. I did get a pearl, however, and that was really cool. I also got a quality bobber, which I would sell, of course. So I had some tarot tubers to plant, I also had some pineapple seeds from slain enemies in the volcano dungeon. I also got the parrots on day 99 to fix up the beach area here. This gave me access to a new zone, which in hand gave me access to more golden walnuts. Three to be exact, one sneaky one down there of course, I could also fish up stingrays there too if I wanted. So I made 52 kegs today. It was time to get the ball rolling on starfruit wines, it was day 99. Look at all our lovely kegs. I will build a shed eventually when I can properly afford it. Sheds are very expensive in this game. So I figured out the code, got myself a pearl here from the um, the mermaid show. And I wanted to get this special submarine fish today. So I got the blobfish, followed by the spook fish, followed by the midnight squid. So all I needed now was just a legend fish to more or less complete the fishing collection there with Willy, along with the stingray and a few other fish as well. I bought 237 starfruit off Sandy, so I set up the greenhouse with those, and any excess starfruit I had 
would go over to Ginger Island. It was time for the rock rejuvenation quest today that I got for Emily. And, and I had all those minerals on hand inside a chest. And I got a thousand gold for completing that quest. Over to Ginger Island on day 100. I filled it up with starfruit. There's a lot more space to take up. But for now this would have to do. Day 101. It is the wizard's birthday. Let's give him a lovely void essence. And that's going to give him a lot of friendship points. 9 out of 10 hearts. We're almost there with the wizard. So it's going to be a big boost for these 100 days. To max out all of the relationships with all of the NPCs. I also needed just a few fish left to get to capture all the fish in the game. So I headed down into the cave, it's got the stonefish, the ghost fish, also fished up the ice pip as well, that was quite the challenge. And I also got myself a lava eel. That was all of the fish in the mines out of the way. I also gave Clint the iron bar he was looking for, that completes another daily quest for us. That was 500 gold in the bag. So if you're new to this series, just so you know, the discount rate is set at 25%, meaning we're not going to get a whole lot of money anytime soon. However, fishing tackles such as the treasure hunter here will sell for full price. So we will try to abuse that to the best of our abilities. 250 gold per treasure hunter. On day 102, we get a letter from Mayor Lewis in regards to the upcoming Winter Star event. The person we got to gift this time around is Lewis himself. Fortunately, we do have a few things lying around the old farm that we can gift Lewis to get those lovely friendship points. Another help want the quest today, Willie was up for a pike, 300 gold, we absolutely were not going to pass that up. So I got a pike, gave that to Willie straight away, and that got some extra friendship points with Willie as well. So we were one step closer to maxing out friendship with Willie. So we headed on over to Ginger Island, we just needed a few more fish to get all of the fish in the game. So started with the lionfish there, I also got the stingray. I then started looking for artifacts for Professor Snail's archaeology quest. I got the mummified frog there from just whacking open the grass. A lot more artifacts to find here, including the fossilized legs that we can get from breaking open these bone nodes. And the bone fragments are also a huge bonus because later on we get the bone mills. They're going to save us so much money. I also hold up a golden walnut there as well that I missed the last time around. Inside Professor Snail's hut, there was a survey we could do. That had two questions the first was purple flowers on the island so that gave us a handy golden walnut and the second was to survey the starfish around the island purple starfish and that got us another handy golden walnut as well it was then time to take on the nightmare pylon puzzle and you actually would not believe that i managed to do this on my first attempt i just got a real easy combination of colors to choose from i was so happy with this normally it takes me a full day to do this sometimes if i get desperate i take out my phone and record it but First attempt, three golden walnuts in the bag. It was then off into the mines the next day. And this is one of the best places in the game you can go and get stone, in my opinion. So much stone to be had. But more importantly, really nice rings and weapons to be had inside the volcano dungeon. I also got the fossilized tail later on that day, just from panning up some stuff out of the water. And there was a lot more artifacts I had to get. Fished up the fossilized spine here as well. So I was well on my way to completing Professor Snell's archaeology quests. I was getting a little bit worried about Rasmodius here. He wanted to study the arcane properties of a coconut. You know, first it was Willy with the copper ores. Now I'm beginning to think Rasmodius might have some issues as well. But we did go to Clint and he did give us another archaeology piece from cracking open those golden coconuts. I also gave Evelyn a birthday gift today. That was at more friendship points with her. That pushed her right up to five hearts out of ten. I then gave Rasmodius the coconut that he wanted. He gave me a nice reward, but more importantly, I got friendship points with him as well. I also gave him a gift, but I didn't realise they gave him two gifts this week, so he would have to wait until tomorrow for fresh gifts. I also had a lovely resin farm here, and I had exactly 100 trees planted. That's 100 oak resins every couple of days I could amass. Now, I have been amassing those for quite some time. I do have hundreds and hundreds of oak resins at the moment. Went inside the secret woods as well, just to farm more hardwood. So I finally got the star drop off Haley, just for getting her hearts up. And that is another star drop added to the bag. Just a few star drops left to go. So I got a quest here from Robin. She wanted some hardwood. I said no problem at all. She'll get that eventually. I also got some crystallariums here as well. Generating jades. And these are great for staircases that we trade in every Sunday. So I went to Professor Snell, completed the first of many archaeology quests. And I also had a few other bits and bobs to give them too. I also had taro tubers planted, and the reason why I planted those was to get more golden walnuts just from the farming aspect of it. Traded in my jades for staircases, 
And I spent the rest of the day just cutting down trees because I needed a lot more wood because I wanted to make a lot more cakes. It was time to harvest the lovely starfruit wine. Now with a 25% discount, the starfruit wine obviously isn't as potent as it usually is, but it's still good enough for us. Gave Robin the hardwood, she was super happy with that. More friendship points with Robin and more importantly, more money in our pocket. A lovely 500 gold, thank you very much. The gains are small at the moment, but things will pick up later on in the video. It was time for another quest. It was Clint again. Wanted to look at more copper ores. I was really worried about Clint. I thought about it for a while and if I should accept the quest or not. Eventually, I came to the conclusion of why not. I get to keep the ores myself. I didn't need them to make cakes anyway. So I might as well just pick up the money as well. So it was time for another quest. I went with community cleanup straight away. Fiber seeds are just way too overpowered to pass up. So I had seven days to fish up some trash and I got to work on that immediately. Went straight down to floor 100 here. This is one of the best floors you can go to to get trash. Lots of trash to be had. Completed that after the day. And that was another quest done for Linus. And as a reward, he would give me the recipe to make fiber seeds. And they are just so handy. The 500 gold isn't the true reward. The true reward is the fiber seeds. Trust me on that. You'll never need fiber again. So I visited Robin today and gave her some goat's cheese because it was her birthday and she was super happy with that. That was at more friendship points with her pushing her right up to five hearts out of eight. I then went down to the mines to do Clint's quest. So I was just breaking open some copper nodes here. I got loads of copper in no time at all. Having the extra perks, you know, for the plus one ore per vein helps as well. So I showed Clint the ores. Maybe this time he'd be happy with the geology of the mines and he'll just let it be, you know. Day 108, we finally get the fiber seed recipe. This makes getting fiber just way too easy. All you need are mixed seeds, sap, and clay. What's going to hold you back there now are the mixed seeds, but you can accumulate those if you just farm the weeds on the ground with the scythe all the time. So I decided to hoe up some ground here, or I suppose blow up some ground, just to save myself from hoeing a lot of spots up. And I put down a load of fiber seeds that I made, and these don't even have to be watered. And I'll be able to harvest these in a couple of days. I will have hundreds and hundreds of fibre afterwards. I also went back to Ginger Island and completed the mermaid puzzle. And I also got a ruby there from... That was the east bird. So that went into the east pedestal. I had enough gold and walnuts to get another upgrade done. So I decided to get the warp obelisk back to the farm. This would save me a little bit of time when I needed to go back to the farm to do some stuff back there. So I spent the rest of the day cutting down more trees. Because I needed thousands and thousands of wood for all of the kegs. That I will be building later on in the game. I also got some ginger there as well. Because ginger ale is really nice. Day 109. I gave Lewis a hot pepper. He was super happy with that. You get a lot of friendship points with the NPCs. When you give them gifts during the winter star event. I got the lovely Marnie for my secret gift giver. She gave me 12 eggs. I wasn't actually too upset with that. That was pretty good. Another day. Another quest. 6 red slimes to kill. 750 gold as a reward. I wasn't turning that down at all. It was also Clint's birthday today, so I gave him an aquamarine. That got me a lot of friendship points with Clint, pushing him right up to 8 out of 10 hearts. So I'm getting there now with most of the NPCs. I'm back down into the mines now, and I'm actually farming for more copper ores to smelt into copper bars, because I wanted to make more fishing tackles. So after a good few hours of farming copper, I smelted all those ores into bars to make trap bobbers. I just needed copper bars and sap to make these, and these trap bobbers sell for a few hundred gold apiece, and because I can make so many... It's a viable way to make money, because the crops aren't going to do it for me right now. And once I ran out of sap, I just used up iron bars then to make spinners. They sold for a few hundred gold as well. And I also made cork bobbers using wood, hardwood and slime, because all these fishing tackles sell for the full price, which is amazing. So if I'm going to get anywhere with this playthrough, if I'm going to make some serious progress, a lot of it is going to come down to selling tons and tons of fishing tackles. So the next day I went back into the mines to complete that quest I got from the Hell Wanted poster. I just had to kill six of these red slimes. And if I saw a gold ore I would have grabbed that as well. So I spoke to Lewis. That was another quest complete. More money in my pocket and more friendship points towards Lewis. The more friendship points I can accumulate now the better. 750 gold? Nice. So I was up at 48,000 gold right now at the moment. But I'm saving up you see for upgrades. That's why I haven't spent the gold yet. So I did another quest here now to kill some rock crabs. The great thing about these quests is that they also count towards monster eradication goals. So everything I'm doing here will accumulate. Day 113, the first day of spring, a new NPC visits. Stardew Valley Kent is his name and we had to get him right up to 10 hearts as well. 
So we had to plan ahead with Kent. So what I wanted to do was, and do it as quickly as possible, is get the theatre up and running. But to do that I needed the final house upgrade, so I needed 100,000 gold to access the cellar to get the Silver Star wine from a cask. The greenhouse was also complete here now, full of star fruit, gonna harvest all this star fruit. That will be all turned into star fruit wine, and that is being slowly accumulated at the moment. I'm hoping to get a good few million from that when I have enough. So I went to Robin today, it was time for another house upgrade, 50,000 gold and 150 pieces of hardwood. That put me right back down to 165 gold, I was poor yet again. I did go for the island ingredients quest here to ship 100 pineapples, because I actually had pineapples growing on the farm now at the moment. And I would get the solar panel for completing that quest as well, which I needed in order to get perfection. So I needed to sell some stuff to Willie to be able to afford a ticket over to Ginger Island. So I met some treasure hunters and I foraged some stuff off the beach. That got me up to 3,000 gold. The melon was also ready and the frog inspected that. He will give me five golden walnuts for the inspection of that melon. He'll also give me five additional golden walnuts for the inspection of the wheat. And he will give me five more down the road when I eventually get my hands on a garlic. And I can actually get my hands on that now because it's year two. So the rest of the day was just spent doing work on the farm. Uh, I also got level 10 farming. I'm going with the shepherd here because I want my sheep to produce wool faster. And also I want higher quality wool as well. So it was time to pull up more star fruits. And I was also getting some golden walnuts from this too. You get a total of five golden walnuts from farming on Ginger Island. It's broken down into various categories. I also went into Key's secret walnut room and I decided to go with the Key's crop. This will be our first key quest that we're going to do for this series. So the reason why I didn't go with the other one is because I suck a Junimo cart and it was 100 key gems as a reward for just 500 key fruit. That quest originally used to be 1000 key fruits but it was nerfed down to 500 because 1000 was a bit too hard. Still doable but very difficult. Key beans can be gotten all over the place. Gus was also on the island today and I decided to get a tropical curry recipe off him because this recipe can be extremely frustrating to get because you're not guaranteed Gus to visit Ginger Island on you know specific days. It's totally random. Also completed that quest there with the gems and I got more golden walnuts. Key beans can also be got from treasure chests which is really nice. You can put them straight out of the water as well. You can get them from trees. You can get them from blown open nodes such as this. It's got a key bean there. I'm also pretty sure you can get it from killing enemies as well, and they also pop out of chests just like this. So you can get key beans all over the place. You don't actually have to fish for the whole day to get them. Just play as you normally would, and you will come across lovely key beans. Because it was raining back on Stardew Valley, I got the scene here of the Georgia Mart uh, getting blown open there. And that will activate the last bundle that we need to complete in order to unlock the theatre. It was also Ken's birthday. So I gave him the golden pumpkin and I got a few friendship points from there which was nice. It was now time to catch the legend. This was the last fish I needed to get the master angler. It took me a few goals to get the legend. It's a very difficult catch but I got it eventually. And that's all fish now caught in the game. And that will reward me with a star drop off Uli later on. The fibre seeds also grew up into lovely fibre. So I'm going to scythe all those away. The next day I finally get a star drop off Uli for catching all the fish in the game. That was another star drop added to the bag. We are getting closer to perfection. But the main challenge was going to be the golden clock for 10 million gold. That is going to be ferociously hard with the discount rate set to only 25%. So I went into the coop today. Lots of stuff on the ground to pick up. I needed to get an auto grabber for that coop. But I just didn't want to pay 25,000 gold for it. I decided to wait until I got one up from the Skull Cavern. I also spoke to Birdie today. She gave me a quest to do. It starts with Kent, who gives you a gourmet tomato salt. You just give that to Gus, he'll give you the Stardew Valley Rose. You go all the way to desert with that, give that to Sandy and you get the advanced TV remote. You give the TV remote to George and he will give you the Arctic Shard. You then go all the way down to the Wizard's Tower with the Arctic Shard and he will give you a Wriggling Worm. And you then finish up by giving the Wriggling Worm to Willy, who will give you the Pirate's Locket. And all you do then is bring that back to Birdie and she will reward you with some golden walnuts and a recipe to make fairy dust which is an absolutely amazing recipe and it will save us a ton of time when it comes to getting the silver star wine later on from one of the casks. I also got the frog seen here too he just expected some of the garlics that I put down and he was happy enough with those. Five more golden walnuts from the frog so we're definitely getting there with the owl golden walnuts. So this is the first batch of key fruit that I grew. I'm going to get all these key fruits, put them into seed makers and just replant. And I will rinse and repeat until I've got 500 planted. That will be the quest done 
over the next couple of days. So that took me most of the day because I, did, I only had a few seed makers to work with. I really needed to make a lot more seed makers to make this quest and future quests go a lot faster. It was that time of the week again. The star fruit has emerged from the kegs. It was time to fill all the kegs back up with more star fruit. That star fruit wine is going to come in super handy later on. But if we want to get the 10 million gold, we have to think bigger. Much bigger. So we need to at least get probably five to 600 more kegs. So it was Sunday. That means a staircase is for us because the crystariums generate shades all the time. And it was collecting the oak resins from the tappers as well. We had quite the amount of oak resins now inside the chest. Went down through the Skull Caverns today. I got myself some Iridium Sprinklers. I was pretty happy with that. I was primarily looking for resources so I could make more Crystallariums. I got some Key Beans too from blowing up with some nose, which is cool. I made it to floor 100 and I drank some Iridium Snake Milk and that gave me a permanent health increase of 25, which was fabulous. Spent the rest of the day just going through the Skull Cavern. The deeper I got, the better. I got lots of Iridium Ores, lots of Gold Ores, lots of Stone. I got lots of everything, which was great. So it was time to check out the Hidden Bundle. And I had most of the stuff there needed. I had the caviar. I had that from ages ago from putting the sturgeon into the fish pond. Had a prismatic shard. I actually had the dinosaur mayonnaise back at home. I just needed to fish up a void salmon. And I also needed to get a silver star wine. And that bundle was as good as complete. It was time for another special orders quest. I'm going to go with a quest called the strong stuff for Pam. So I just needed to get some potatoes for that. And just put those potatoes into kegs. And that was another easy quest done. So I purchased 12 potatoes there in total and I'll just put those down in the greenhouse because there's actually nothing in the greenhouse at the moment. Now eventually that greenhouse will be filled up with other stuff but for now it was barren so I just used it for the potatoes. Back to Ginger Island pulling up more pineapples because I still have the other special artist quest to do for Caroline to ship off 100 pineapples. I did however convert all these ones into pineapple seeds to increase pineapple capacity and I made sure I had enough time to get that done as well. I also pulled up more key fruit, and this was quite the number of key fruits that I was going to pull up here. And all these key fruits will be converted back into key beans, and they will replant it as per usual. That took up a huge amount of time, but it will be worth it because the reward will be 100 key gems. It was time for another key quest. I'll go to extended family. You'll just pull up the fish again. A nice handy dandy 20 key gems for that. It was also Vincent's birthday. Gave him a snail that I had in a chest from ages ago. That was Vincent up to 7 out of 10 hearts. So I pulled up the Glacier Fish Junior later on that day. That was one of the legendary fish done. I went home and Haley asked me should we have a baby. I said of course. The next day I pulled up the legend too. And I just continued on. And pulled up the rest of the legendary fish throughout the day. Such as the radioactive carp. And the son of the crimson fish. And of course we finished up with Miss Angler. And that was the quest complete. More key gems for us in the bag. So this time it was back to the wizard and I gave him another item that he wanted for a quest. That was an aquamarine that he wanted. That was more gold for us. And it was also the wizard up and 10 hearts. So you're probably going to see a trend form here now where I'm going to the mines a lot to smelt bars. The reason why I smell so many bars is because I have to make so many things. I need to make tons of kegs. I need to make tons of crystallariums. And that requires tons and tons of bars. So I took a break today. I did the old Easter event. Got a thousand gold for winning that event. I was super happy with that. I already got the straw hat from the year previous and that night more lovely starfruit wine was ready to be harvested so I filled up all the kegs again with starfruit. So the next day it was off to Sandy and needed to buy more starfruit seeds 100 gold per seed but it was worth it because the profit I was getting back was pretty good. I was making over 700 gold per wine so I would get there eventually by just having stacks upon stacks of starfruit wine that was the overall plan in order to get the golden clock, along with using fish and tackle to get the odd upgrade here and there. But the starfruit wine is more than likely the crop that will do it for us eventually. So I had no money left, I had to sell Willie from tackles to afford a ticket back over to Ginger Island again. The 1000 gold for those tickets were killing me, but there was nothing I could do about it at the moment. It was time to harvest more key fruit. The usual story of course, convert it all back into key beans, plant it and sell the excess amount. So I now had enough planted so that the next time I harvest it, the quest would be complete. Thank God. I hope to never do that quest again. <laughs> the potatoes were also ready. Day 127 now, so we're getting there. And I was gonna convert all these potatoes into potato juice, and hopefully that will keep Pam happy for a while. More importantly, it'll give a lot of friendship points towards Pam and a lot of money in our pocket. 
So because I was using the copper bars and the iron bars to constantly make fishing tackles, I wasn't making as many cakes as I should have been making. And because of that, I had an over accumulation of oak resins. So I actually ended up selling some of the oak resins because I just had hundreds and hundreds of them just sitting there. It was time for another special orders quest. We had a choice for gifts for George or Robin's project. I went with Robin's project because I actually had some hardwood trees grown on the farm. So I cut down all those hardwood trees. That was going to be another easy quest done for the lovely Robin. 80 hardwood, you're welcome. And as a reward, I managed to get 2,000 gold, which is pretty nice indeed. So those special community quests were actually helping a lot in terms of making progress here and there. I also made a couple of looms as well, just so I could get the ball rolling with cloth, because I wanted to mass produce dressed spinners, and to make those, you needed lots of iron bars and cloth. I also put a void salmon, and I also put a dinosaur mayonnaise into the hitting bundle, just needed a silver star wine next. So I put some void eggs into a chest here for Krobus, he loves void eggs. We would use the void eggs to get Krobus' friendship right up to 10 out of 10 eventually. The void eggs is a cheap and cheerful way to do it. So I gave Evelyn a leak here, she wanted it for George, that was another quest complete. More importantly, it was friendship points towards Evelyn, and that's what we're all about at the moment, it's friendship points. It was time for another key quest, so we're going to go for Danger in the Deep. This would give us access to the hardened version of the mines, it will also give us access to the lovely radioactive bar. Before I went in, it was time to do some weapon upgrades. I put three rubies into the Galaxy Sword, just to make it a bit stronger. And then it was time to head into the dangerous version of the mines. Made it down to floor 26, passed out, but I got a good bit ways down, so I was happy enough with that. It was Pam's birthday, of course. Give her a cactus fruit, she was delighted. 10 out of 10 hearts with Pam, didn't have to give her any more gifts. Lovely stuff. Back down into the hardened versions of the mines, I was going through the middle tier at the moment, which is one of the more difficult tiers. I got straight down to the 70 floors that was fighting skeletons, and these were actually dropping lots of bone fragments for me, which was great. And I actually got down into the 90s as well, and I was fighting regular void enemies here. I was getting lots of gold ores, lots of stone, met it down to floor 120 eventually. Got some key gems as my reward. It was time to head back out onwards to the next day. And as per usual, we have kegs filled up with more starfruit wine. <laughs> so the trend continues. We're harvesting wine, we're smelting bars, making tackles. Basically, we're just trying to get as much money going as possible. I also got the potato juices for Pam. She'll be super happy with those as well. And it was time for another help wanted quest. It was the golden quest. Harvey this time wanted a diamond. 2,250 gold. That is by far the best quest you can get. Put the potato juice in the fridge for Pam. And as a reward, I got 3,000 gold for that. And it was straight off to Harvey to get another 2,000 gold for giving him a diamond. So today was an absolutely magnificent day for money. 3,000 off Pam, 2,000 off Harvey. What more could I have asked for? So it was Shane's birthday today. Give him a beer. He was super happy with that. He was up now at 7 out of 8 hearts. I almost had Shane max out. It was then back to Ginger Island to pull up the remaining key fruit, and this was going to be the last harvest of key fruit I had to do. This would complete the quest, awarding me 100 key gems in total, which is absolutely fantastic. So when all the key fruit was pulled up, I just replaced it with star fruit, using the Ginger Island farm to its maximum abilities. This is how we're going to get the golden clock. We're just going to have to sell tons and tons of wine, along with fishing tackles. So I purchased three galaxy souls the next day with all of the key gems I had accumulated. I also got key to the town, making access to the NPCs a little bit easier. I did eye up Pierre's missing stock list, but didn't have enough for it at the moment. I also got a banana, finally, off the fully grown banana tree. Gave that to the gorilla, he was super happy with that. As a reward, he gave me three more golden walnuts. So I went back into the volcano dungeon today, I came across these strange looking mushroom type enemies, but every time I killed one of these enemies, they dropped magma caps, which is an amazingly good food that you can eat. I also upgraded my galaxy sword to an infinity blade, super happy with that. And it was time for another special artist quest, this time I'm going for a curious substance, because I wanted to get the monster musk off the wizard to make life much easier for me on the road. I also went with Skull Cavern Invasion for the key quest because it was awarding 40 key gems and I had staircases to burn. Because I had the Crusader enchant, these mummies died in literally two hits. They also dropped tons and tons of cloth for me, which was magnificent. So I was making it down to the floors and I got to floor 100, got some quality sprinklers, happy days. The next day, I gave the wizard the ectoplasm he wanted and I was rewarded with 2500 gold, but more importantly, 
he'll send me the recipe for Monster Musk the next day. Back into the mines and we're smelting bars. We're going with iron bars this time, of course, for kegs, for fishing tackles. We needed tons and tons of iron bars. I made some bone mills as well, actually. It was time to get the ball rolling with those. And it was time to start working on Leo. He loves duck feathers. Um, he had zero out of ten hearts at the moment because I've been neglecting him. But it was time to make an effort now with Leo. So with the key gems I had, I started off with getting Pierre's missing stock list. This would give me access to all the crops in the game through Pierre. And the rest of the crops through Sandy. I also got a Deconstructor as well with the remaining amount. Deconstructor will come in super handy later on. The Moan Mills are serving me well. What I was looking for here was Quality Fertilizers, Tree Fertilizers and Deluxe speed growth they're all amazing items and it means i don't have to buy them and waste money i can just get them off the bone mills because there's tons of bone fragments that you can get from the dig site on ginger island so i went to the flower dance today asked marda to dance with me because i needed to get friendship points with her i'm sure Haley won't mind of course so you know especially with having the baby and everything <laughs> it was time for another dance off what i love about this event is that it's one of the best events out there to get hearts up with people that night, Haley gave birth to a baby boy. What are we going to call it? We're going to call it Garfunkel. <laughs> Go Garfunkel! I also completed the Island of Greetings quest. 3,750 gold in the bag. Thank you very much. Spoke to Haley. She was super excited about the baby, but I was super concerned because I couldn't see an actual viable way to get access to the baby without moving some furniture around. I also got some tea leaves from Caroline's sunroom. Put those into a keg to get green tea to sell that. Because in order to get perfection, you had to sell one of each item in the game. Or one of most of the item types in the game. I also had lots of Omni Geodes. Got Clint to break open all those. Because I needed to collect all of the minerals in the game. Best way to do that is to get Clint to break open all the Omni Geodes. So I got tons of minerals from that. And as a reward, I got a Crystallarium. I was super happy with that. It was also off to Desert Trader. Today was Thursday, which means Magic Rock Candy for me. I had the Prismatic Shards to spare. So I said, why not? I also went back into the coop today to collect a huge amount of items that were just left on the ground. I really needed an auto grabber badly, but I didn't want to pay 25,000 gold to get one. So I kept on waiting out for the chances to pick one up in the Skull Cavern. It was also Pierre's birthday today. Gave him a fried calamari. He was super happy with that because he loves that. That got him up to 8 out of 10 hearts, which was great. I made tons of dressed spinners today using iron bars and cloth. I had tons of cloth to spare. The problem was actually iron and bars. Needed to farm a lot more iron. Those dressed spinners will however sell for 500 gold a pop. I also activated the Shrine of Challenge which will now turn the mines into the hardened versions of the mines which means I can farm radioactive bars. I also went back to the volcano cave today because I wanted to get the ginger ale recipe and the warp totem to the island recipe. This would save me a ton of gold going forward because I already had lots of resources to make warp totems to Ginger Island. So I also went through the rest of the Volcano Cave, enchanted my pickaxe, got the swift enchant, which means the pickaxe will now swing a lot faster. And I got the shaving enchant for the gold axe, which means I get a lot more wood from the trees now and I cut down the trees. It was then back to the greenhouse to farm more starfruit. So as you can see here now, there's basically a trend of constantly farming starfruit, convert that into starfruit wine. Go to the mines, do the quests, accumulate money, and we're just going to keep on accumulating more and more money all the time because we need to in order to get that golden clock. So, I tried a tactic now today. I literally spent almost the whole day going up and down into floor one, literally farming radioactive ores to turn into radioactive bars. Even with 25% discount, these bars should sell for over a thousand gold apiece, and that was nothing to sniff at. So it was also Emily's birthday today, it gave her the ruby, she was super happy with that. And that was Emily maxed out with 8 out of 8 hearts. One step closer to maxing out all of the friendships in the valley. So this time I decided to put down some ancient seeds inside the greenhouse. And these ancient seeds will accumulate and accumulate over time. Also got some battery packs too today from the uh, electrical pylons. Which will come in super handy for making more crystallariums later on in the game. Because we're going to need hundreds of crystallariums to achieve perfection. So I got lots of radioactive bars today from smelting open the ores, I'm gonna sell all those. I also got an ostrich egg over on Ginger Island because I found a letter that showed me the location of one. And I'll be able to hatch an ostrich with that and then sell future ostrich eggs, which is needed for perfection. Finally got forage level 10. Went with botanist of course, which means every time I pick up an item, it's gonna be of iridium quality. 
Look at all the money I get for the mining stuff here. 33, almost 34,000 gold. Iridium bars are going for 1,125 gold per bar. That was absolutely amazing. Time for another special orders quest. This time we're actually going to go with Pierre's Prime Produce. And we're going to try to get 25 gold star vegetables. I felt like I could easily get that. Because I had lots of quality fertilizer from the bone mills. So I purchased 100 red cabbages. Also accepted another Skull Cavern Invasion quest. Super lucky there. 40 more key gems in the bag. Because I had loads of jades. Loads of staircases. Planted the red cabbages. I also put down quality fertilizers. To ensure that I get gold star red cabbages. Because I need 25 in total to complete that quest. Spent the rest of the day cutting down trees. To accumulate more wood. Because I wanted to make more cakes. So it was a day of tree cutting. For day 142. I also went back into the volcano dungeon here. And I was farming magma sprites. Magma sparkers. Because I wanted to get all of the monster eradication gold. So I also got a protection ring too from the chest. Which I'll sell later on to Marilyn. I gave Jess a pearl today for her birthday. That got her to 5 out of 10 hearts. Jess was super happy. I made 56 more kegs today. Because I accumulated enough resources to do so. And by that I mean cutting down a ton of trees. Put the kegs down. I really needed a shed. But it shed cost 15,000 gold. I had to hold off for now. I needed to make a lot more gold, so I basically sold all of the excess stuff that was in around. I sold unprocessed stuff such as milk and wool. I sold 465 oak resins. Sure, I could have kept them and made more kegs, but they were just over accumulating all the time, so I just said I'd sell them. I had a tree farm set up with 100 tappers, so I know I would get back the oak resins eventually anyway. Made 35,000 gold from all that stuff today. That got me up over 100,000 gold, which means I could finally get the last house upgrade. That cost 100,000 gold. I needed that to access the casks. To access the Silver Star Wines. To get the movie theatre. So it was basically a huge plan in motion. Look at all the lovely star fruit today. I was going to harvest all this. And the whole lot was going to go inside. Kegs for more star fruit wine. I haven't sold any star fruit wine yet. It's accumulating at the moment. When I do decide to sell it. I will respec into the artisan profession. So it will be worth 40% more. So we're back to Ginger Island again, planted more starfruit seeds, and this time it was back down into the Skull Cavern. But this time it was the hardened version of the Skull Cavern, so I had to have my wits about me. The good thing about the hardened version of Skull Cavern is that you can also get radioactive ore down here as well. I was also hunting Pepperexes because I needed to kill those for monster eradication goal. So Pepperexes were high on the priority list. I didn't do too well that day, it didn't make it down to floor 100, but the next day was Sunday, so I traded up, got my staircases and went for another attempt, and today I got down to floor 100 no problem at all. I got a Crystallarium on floor 13, an Autograbber on floor 36, Prismatic Shard on floor 56, I was getting great treasures today, another Crystallarium a few floors later, it was just a great day. Any time I saw huge floors like this with loads of zombies or mummies, I just killed them straight away because I wanted the cloth. And sometimes they dropped between two and even three pieces of cloth upon death. 65 pieces of cloth, an auto petter, two crystallariums, an auto grabber. It, it was an absolutely marvellous day I had in the Skull Cavern. So, the house was finally upgraded. And I'm going to fill up all these casks with starfruit wine. And what I'll do is I will wait until they all are of iridium quality. But once the first one reaches Silver Star, I'll take that one out to get the theatre. So I'm going to go over to Juicy Bugs Wanted Quest, which is just 100 pieces of bug meat. This will be done very quickly because I have the burglar ring. It was also time to give Gus an orange today, just to get friendship points up with him. That was Gus maxed out, 10 out of 10 hearts. Today was of course Monday, which meant another key quest. I had a choice of keys, prismatic range or extended family. I went with extended family and just pulled up more fish for an easy 20 key gems. So I spent a great deal of time today trying to get these fish. The glacier fish didn't give me an easy time today. It took me a few attempts to get that. I did however one shot the radioactive carp. One shot it the son of the crimson fish. And it took me a few attempts to get the legend too. Eventually it decided to take it easy on me. And I managed to pull that up out of the water. And we finished up with Miss Angler. Giving us 20 more key gems in the bag. So Sandy wanted a tuna and she got just that. I didn't have a whole lot of friendship points to accumulate it with Sandy, so I had to work extra hard with her. Back to the regular mines, collecting iridium bars this time, and smelting copper bars. Why are we smelting copper bars? Because we want more kegs, of course. So it was Maru's birthday today, gave her a battery pack, she was super happy with that. 
I also spoke with her after so to get more friendship points and that would push her to almost 8 hearts. I also snuck beside Demetrius to give his wife a lovely peach. That's right Demetrius, get out of the bed. <laughs> I'm busy here talking to your wife. Back down into the mines, we are killing bugs to get bug meat. I need a hundred total of course. But if I saw copper ores and other stuff, I'd get those as well. If I saw slimes, I'd kill those for slime. Once the quest was done, I put the 100 meat into a container here. And as a reward, I came out with 3000 gold. I was so happy with that. I went to the luau today as well, putting a ghost star sturgeon. I did this because you get a lot of friendship points if you do really well in the luau. The government, of course, was very happy with my sacrifice. So it was time to get more jades from the crystallariums and fill up the kegs with more starfruit. It was just another day on the beach farm, of course. It was back to Ginger Island. The red cabbages were finally ready. Going to harvest all these lovely red cabbages. I also got my first snake vertebrate today. This is just a super rare, super rare artifact that's needed to complete Professor Snail's archaeology quest. I needed one more snake vertebrate. Clint wanted more copper ores. It was becoming a big problem. I decided not to take this quest because I was really worried about Clint and his obsession with copper ores. I did however complete the quest for 25 gold star red cabbages and I got 2500 gold as a reward. Went to the Statue of Uncertainty, 10,000 gold to swap over a profession. So I had to be really careful about using this feature. I decided to respec into Artisan because I wanted to sell some star fruit wines just to get some upgrades done and dusted. So it was Alex's birthday today, I just gave him a rabbit's foot because my rabbit was kind enough to amputate its foot but not to worry, rabbits in this game are magical and they will regenerate their limbs no problem at all. I purchased a load of sheep off Marnie just to increase my wool production so I can get more cloth so I can make more dressed spinner tackle. I was running really low on hay so I just ran around here just to cut away some grass to get some hay and what I'm doing here is I'm cutting very specifically so that it will grow back a lot faster because there's grass on all sides. I'd ran that day, I made a lot more crystallariums, and I decided to just do up the farm a little bit, put down some pathways, change some things around, and put down the crystallariums in a better fashion so I can just harvest them a lot more efficiently. I made 447,000 gold today, primarily from selling star fruit wine. 787 gold for a star fruit wine. I know it's not much with the 25% discount, but that's the best we're going to do, and that's what we're going to have to do in order to get. Things like the Golden Clock and the Warp Obelisks. Now, we will use Tackle as well, but the Starfruit Wine is going to come in fierce handy. It was time to change our professions again. Now that I sold my Starfruit Wine, I was going to re back into Shepherd again. I also used a Fairy Dust here, just so I can get the Silver Star Wine. And now I can get access to the theatre. This was the last item I needed to finish off the missing bundle. So, using the theatre, I'll be able to get friendship points up with people a lot easier. Now, you can only use the theatre once a week but it will be so worth it. I can focus on people that I don't have a whole lot of friendship points with, bring them into the theater, and get the hearts up very quickly with them. So we're going back into Shepherd, sheep produce wool faster, befriend barn animals quicker. Bear in mind too that with this profession, combined with a sheep that has maxed out hearts, a sheep will produce one wool every single day, which is amazing. Also, an Iridium star wool has a 66% chance to get you back two pieces of cloth. We're going with Cave Patrol, slay 50 grubs for Clint, that will pay well, and we'll also get bug meat along the way, so why not? This time we're going to go with Key's Prismatic Grange. I actually had a lot of items lying around the farm, so I felt confident I could do that quest without spending too much money, because money was super important to us at the moment. So, to complete the quest, I had a huge assortment of different blue items. I also had the usual cherry bombs, copper ores, fiber, sap, white essences, they're all super easy to get. Um, I also had a lot of blue items here as well, such as George Colas, Crystal Flute, and Blueberries, Aquamarines. That was another easy key quest done. So using the reward that I got, I decided to purchase up as much recipes as I could, because I'm going to have to make all these recipes at least once to complete certain achievements in this game in order to get perfection, such as craft all items in this game. So I got my gold pickaxe off Clint. It was time to get him to upgrade more stuff. So using the money that I currently had, I was basically going to get Clint to upgrade all of my tools to Iridium quality just to get that done and dusted. You don't need to have all the tools upgraded to get perfection, it just makes life a lot easier when it comes to general progression later on. 6,000 gold for completing the Cave Patrol Special Orders quest, it was so worth doing. So it was Sam's birthday today, gave him a cactus fruit and that is Sam maxed out 
8 out of 8 hearts. Done and dusted. So it was time to get more recipes today. Banana pudding for 30 bone fragments. And of course the deluxe retaining soil for 50 cinder shards. That retaining soil is something I might consider later on in the game. Robin also had a huge amount of recipes that I could get. Such as flooring and blaziers of course. Now I did have to go out and back into our inventory a few times to get all the blaziers. But I got them all in no time at all. I also got a crafting bench offer as well and some mini fridges. So I got my copper watering can off Clint. It was time to give him another tool to upgrade. This time we'll give him the pickaxe and we'll just finish it off with an iridium pickaxe. Back to Ginger Island. Of course the trend continues. We're pulling up more star fruits from the ground. This run is a very grindy run. But there isn't really a choice. If we want to get the golden clock we have to grind it out. We just got to bite the bullet and get it done. Back on my regular farm, I was going to put all the star fruit into kegs. The reason why I had all the kegs on the regular farm and not Ginger Island was because I needed the space on Ginger Island to grow the crops. So we're off to Robins today and we're going to get her to construct a building for us. And what we're going for here is basically a slime hutch. Reason being, to get tons of slime. If I want to mass produce sturdy rings in the future, this would make it a lot more viable of course. It was then down to the usual processing of wool into cloth. Back to Clint, of course, got my Iridium pickaxe, super happy with that. It was time to upgrade another tool, this time we'll give him the axe, finish that off, upgrade it to the Iridium axe, which is going to make life way easier in terms of cutting down trees. So I decided to experiment a bit, swapping out the jades with quartz, because I can trade quartz in for bombs, and deconstruct bombs into iron ores, smelt those into iron bars, so I can mass produce dress spinners. I also got the snake vertebrae, that was the second one, praise the lord it took me so long to get those, but now I can finally complete Professor Snail's archaeology side quests, which will award me with the rest of the Golden Walnuts. But that won't be all of the Golden Walnuts. There was still a few left to get via the, the Dart minigame, which I'll do in a couple of days as well. But as a bonus reward, Professor Snail will also give me the recipe to make an ostrich incubator, which we need to hatch a lovely ostrich into our lovely farm, which will generate ostrich eggs, which we can sell to get us one step closer to perfection. So I pulled up some ancient fruits today. All of that will go into the seed makers and those seeds will be put back down into the greenhouse. Eventually this greenhouse will be an ancient fruit greenhouse. After that, Ginger Island will slowly but surely become an ancient fruit Ginger Island farm. And ancient fruit will then be converted into ancient fruit wine. So we eventually we will converge from star fruit to ancient fruit. So I placed down my lovely ostrich incubator, put the ostrich egg inside. That's going to take roughly nine days for that to hatch. But we're very patient people. It was off to the desert trader. I had a couple of jades left over. So I traded up to 152 staircases. That'll keep me going for a while, hopefully. I also hold up a strange doll from the ground, which I needed to give to Gunter to get the artifact done. It was back to the Stardew Valley farm, this time we were getting battery packs and all these battery packs would be used of course for crystallariums later on. It was also the dwarf's birthday so I gave him a gift there, I got some nice friendship points with the dwarf, 8 out of 10 hearts, so we're almost there with the dwarf. I also got my Iridium Axe back off Clint, it was time to give him another tool to upgrade, this time we'll go with a steel watering can upgrade. And of course it was time for another key quest, another <laughs> Skull Cavern invasion. I was blessed with Skull Cavern invasions. It's one of the best quests you can get because of the natural resources you can get in the Skull Cavern. It's just amazing. It was time to get the last few golden walnuts by playing the dart game. The dart game gets harder each time because you get less and less darts to use to get the score down to zero. But it's absolutely not impossible. And it is quite fun to play as well. Once I got those three golden walnuts, I then had all 120 golden walnuts gotten one step closer to perfection. So I purchased all the bombs today by trading in quartz. I just had one deconstructor at the moment. So it wasn't very viable right now to spend days deconstructing these bombs into iron ores. I would have to get a lot more deconstructors to make the tactic a lot more viable to use and to profit from. So I saw Leo walking down the path today. I decided to give him a duck feather. That's more friendship points with him. I also gave Clint an amethyst, which is what he was exactly looking for. That was Clint maxed out. Absolutely fabulous. Gave Shane a beer. That was Shane maxed out. Gave Pamela a bear, that was Pamela maxed out. I gave Gus an orange because why not, everyone else is getting gifts. Even though he was already maxed out, I didn't want to leave him out of this lovely gift giving event. And I gave Emily an amethyst, that was Emily maxed out. So I left one happy saloon. <laughs> so I started killing Pepper Rexes today, I finally got the monster eradication goal for Pepper Rexes. All that was left 
was the magma enemies inside the volcano dungeon. I also made it down to floor 100 in the Skull Cavern, completing another key quest, awarding me with more key gems. And of course, the trend continues. We are filling up kegs and harvesting kegs with Starfruit. I also gave the mirror a truffle oil today because it was a quest that I had. I won't ask him what he wants to do with that, but I will certainly take his money and his friendship. 750 gold in the bag, and that was Mayor Lewis maxed out. An achievement there called the Beloved Farmer, but we still had other NPCs to work on before we maxed out all friendships in the game. I got my steel watering can off Clint. I gave him the can straight back to upgrade to a gold watering can, which would be a great help later on. I then went to Robin and got her to build a shed for me, so I can fill it up with more processing machines, but more importantly, I can save some space on the farm. It was then back to Krobus, gave him another void egg. He was super happy with that. With all the money I had, I decided to treat myself to a lovely star drop. This was another star drop in the bag. I actually forgot about this star drop and only found it when I was going through Krobus's inventory. I was under the impression I got it in the last video, but obviously I didn't. I purchased another rare seed because I needed to sell the sweet gem berry for uh, an achievement to get perfection, because the other sweet gem berry was given to the statue to get a star drop. Went back to Ginger Island, I was blown up nodes to get more bone fragments because I wanted to get more lovely items from the bone mills, such as fertilizers and speed grows. Back into the barn, it was time to get more cloth because I wanted to make more dress spinners, of course. I wanted to accumulate hundreds of cloth. So I used Deluxe Speed Grow on all of the fresh ancient fruits here because I wanted them to grow a lot faster because time was of the essence. I also started the chain quest to get access to the casino to get the alien rare crow. So I needed a rainbow shell for the next part. Got that off the beach. Actually got two rainbow shells so I can sell one. I went to Robin the next day and I got her to upgrade a shed to the big shed. I had lots of money at the moment so why not? Might as well spend it all and get as much upgrades as possible. Later on in the day I continued with the chain quest for Mr. Key but what was holding me back now was the 10 beets I needed to place inside Mary Lewis's fridge. So I had to buy some beet seeds from Sandy and they were going to take a few days to grow, 6 days in total but I might be able to speed that up a little bit if I use speed grows and I had hundreds of speed grows. I got my gold watering can off Clint and it was time to get it upgraded again but this time I was going to go with the hoe because I didn't have a brilliant bars on me at the moment. I also made some warp totems to Ginger Island which is going to save me a ton of money because I just didn't want to pay a thousand gold for a ticket anymore. Once that magma sparker died, that was all of the monster eradication goals completed, one step closer to perfection, and we finished off summer with the lovely Moonlight Jellies event with my lovely wife Haley. I don't know where the baby went, but I'm sure the baby is okay because it's just a pixelated game. It was time for a help wanted quest with Kent, he wanted an aquamarine to put under his pillow, I really needed the friendship points with Ken, so I took up the quest straight away and gave him that aquamarine along with an egg because he likes eggs. I didn't have any love to give for him at the time, so you're just going to have to take the eggs off me. <laughs> it was time for another special orders quest. We're going to go with the crop order, ship off 100 pumpkins, and this will give us a lot more money from Mayor Lewis. It was time for another key quest. It was another <laughs> Skull Cavern invasion. I mean, they just kept popping up every single week. Super lucky, of course. It was also time to buy the last recipe I needed, Hyper Speed Grow, and with the remaining golden walnuts, I just purchased some key gems. With the rest of the key gems, I purchased two deconstructors. Super happy with that. So, I got Flounder Row today because I got rid of the sturgeon and I put in flounders into the pool because I needed to get Aged Row to get one step closer to perfection. I also gave Abigail here a ticket to see Mysterium, and this will get friendship points up with Abigail because I wanted to max her out as quickly as possible. I also went back to Clint and got my copper pickaxe. It was time for another tool upgrade, but I didn't have any bars on me right now, so I'd have to go back to him later on. So it was Penny's birthday. She got a melon from myself. She was super happy with that, and that maxed out Penny. Eight out of eight hearts. Super happy with that. So day 170, we're almost there. I planted 100 pumpkin seeds on my ginger island farm, and I also went back to my regular farm and I picked up these ancient fruit, and these would be converted into seeds and they will be replanted back down on the greenhouse. Eventually the greenhouse will be filled up to the top with ancient fruit. So I visited Gus today, purchased the triple shot espresso recipe because I needed that for perfection. And I also gave some gifts as well. Emily got finally got the apricot. She's been asking for it for almost a year, but I didn't have an apricot tree on the farm. So finally the tree fully grew inside the greenhouse. I was able to finish off that quest for Emily. 600 gold in the bag. Back to my lovely barn to get more cloth and then back down to the skull cavern to get radioactive ores but more importantly to make it down to floor 100 
to get those lovely key gems that I needed for progression. When I got to floor 70, I got a Crystallarium. Super happy with that. Crystallarium is probably one of the most important processing machines that I need in order to complete this challenge. Will I complete this challenge within the 200 days? No. Will I complete it within 300 days? I don't know. I'll let you know next week though. <laughs> I purchased 551 star fruit seeds off Sandy, planted those on Ginger Island. I had to water some because I had to make some extra ground with the hoe. Day 173, we are smelting copper bars because I need to make more cakes, a lot more cakes. Once all the copper bars have been smelted, I made 61 more cakes to put into that lovely shed that has just been built. So this shed will be filled up to the top with cakes. I also have lots of cakes outside as well that can go inside. So I filled up all these kegs with more star fruit because I had an overabundance of star fruit that I had to get through. I also gave Elliot a duck feather for his birthday. That maxed out Elliot. Clint wanted 45 more copper ores. Absolutely not, Clint. I'm sorry, but you need to give it up. I'm worried about you, Clint. Just take up some other hobby. Ask Emily out on a date, why don't you? So I get Robin to make me a stable. And the reason why I wanted Robin to make me the stable is because it allows me to transverse the map more quickly saving more time getting more stuff done i also paid clint a visit got him to upgrade my hoe to a steel hoe i'll have that done in a few days back to the regular mines and we are getting iron bars so i'm constantly smelting bars as you can see this has to be done so i can just keep making processing machines and i can keep making fishing tackles smelting iridium bars now i'm gearing up to get more crystal iridiums later went to gill here i got a napalm ring super good and i got some cool hats decided to put on the arcane hat and change up my character a bit and look at me now, I was styling with my new arcane hat, I was ready for action. I got super lucky as well, super rare event here, the strange capsule landed on my farm, I'll put this inside the house. Something does break out of that eventually, so it's really cool when it happens. I also put the 10 beats inside Mary Lewis's fridge, that continued on the chain quest to get into the casino. And I put a solar essence into the, uh, the skeleton's mouth there, which apparently is a sand dragon. And I finally got the club card just outside my house so now i can access the casino and get the goodies that lie within i also spent some time today pulling up fish because i needed certain fish to get certain recipes done i needed to think about cooking up recipes now i also named my horse chuck because my dog in real life is named chuck and he's an awesome dog so let's go chuck let's get perfection together so back to the mines today we're getting more bars iridium bars this time lots of them Went back to Clint, got my steel hoe, and it was time to upgrade it to a gold hoe. And then after that, it'll be upgraded to an iridium hoe. That'll be all the tools upgraded then, except of course the bin. Finally fished up a salmon, needed that to make the salmon dinner recipe. And I also fished up some sea cucumbers here, needed those to make lucky lunches. And I also needed the eel as well to make spicy eel. So I was now just accumulating specific kinds of fish for those recipes. I also went with another special orders quest today. This time we were going with Gus's famous omelette. This will be a super easy quest. I've got loads of chickens that are just too happy to lay eggs for me. It was time for, yes you guessed it, another Skull Cavern invasion. We weren't going to play Juno McCart. Absolutely not. I, I'm just too bad at it. I apologize. 40 key gems for Skull Cavern invasion. Back into the barn. We are getting cloth. We're getting cheese. We're making money. Back to the greenhouse. We're putting up ancient fruit. Convert those into seeds, plant them back down in the greenhouse, our ancient fruit farm continues to grow. We get the gold hoe off Clint, we're going to give that straight back to him, upgrade that to an iridium hoe. Thank you very much Clint. I finally made it to the casino, I played some card games, went double or nothing a few times so I could afford the alien rare crow, which was one of the last rare crows I needed in order to get access to the deluxe rare crow, which we need in order to get perfection. So I left the casino, I'm probably never going to go back there of course, back to the farm and we were getting more starfruit wines. So we had hundreds and hundreds of starfruit wines collected at this stage of the game. So it was Jody's birthday, gave her a diamond, more friendship points with Jody, 9 out of 10 hearts, so we're almost there with Jody. Purchased the magic rock candy, that was the second one. So today I took the magic rock candy, went down through the hardened version of Scott Cavern and I've got some real good stuff in the treasure rooms. 10 bombs, wow. The real prize for me was getting rooms like this filled up to the top with mummies because they die so easily and they give so much cloth. It was a cloth paradise. I visited my lovely pet slimes today in the slime hutch. I put a slime egg into the incubator there and there was a few slime balls that I could harvest. I decided to leave it off done and harvest them later when more slime balls accumulated. 
I also finished off Gus's quest today by putting some eggs into his fridge. That awarded me with 3000 gold, I was super happy with that. Back to the Desert Trader today of course, and this time I had tons of quartz, almost a thousand pieces of quartz. I got back 192 bombs, and the plan was to deconstruct these bombs to get tons of iron ores. I still didn't have enough deconstructors to make this tactic truly good, but I could make lots of dress spinners out of the resources I used today. So much so that I ended up getting loads of money from selling the fishing tackles today. Each dress spinner was sold for 500 gold. This gave me a total of almost 33,000 gold from selling dressed spinners. Who thought the day would come where you had to sell tackle to make a living in this game? It was Abigail's birthday today, give her an amethyst, it just pushed her right up to 7 out of 8 hearts, so I was almost there with Abigail, and it was like this for a lot of the NPCs now, almost had them all maxed out, got my Iridium Hole back off Klimt, that was all of my primary tools, fully upgraded except for of course the watering can, which Klimt will upgrade right now. So it was now time to buy the warp totem recipe off the Desert Trader, followed by a lovely cosy visit at the Robin's house where I gave her a peach, maxing out her friendship, 10 out of 10 with Robin. I also maxed out Linus by giving him a coconut, he was super happy with that. Give Alex a rabbit's foot, he was almost there, just one more heart to go with him. Sam got a cactus fruit, that pushed him up to 8 out of 8 hearts, fabulous. Sebastian got a sashimi, 5 out of 8 hearts with Sebastian, there was a bit of work left to do with him, but we'll get there. The next day it was time to pick up some truffles, pet our lovely ostrich, look at it go, that will eventually start laying ostrich eggs I can sell that egg then, and be one step closer to achieving perfection. It was usual story today, so we're going to fill up the rest of the greenhouse now with these ancient seeds. And then the ancient seeds we get going forward will make their way over to Ginger Island and that will slowly but surely become an ancient fruit farm as well. And that's going to mean lots of extra money for us. So I got another shed off Robin today, I'll just put that down beside this shed for now. I will move them around eventually to make the farm look a bit nicer. Went to the quarry today, I spent the whole day in the quarry just doing up this place. I got rid of all resources here. And I'm going to put down trees and I'm going to put tree fertilizer on all of these trees to make them grow super fast. Then I will cut down these trees to get an absolute ton of wood. Finally got my iridium watering can back off Clint. That was all primary tools upgraded. Except for the trash can of course. But we can come back to the trash can later on. Today it was time for another special orders quest. We're going to go with cave patrol with Clint. And we're going to kill 50 bats if we come across them of course. So the pumpkins were finally ready over on Ginger Island. They're going to harvest all these pumpkins and then ship them off. And that'll be another special orders quest completed. The pumpkins will now be replaced with lovely ancient seeds. And those ancient seeds will continue to grow and spread. So we have a choice now for key quests. Four precious stones or Skull Cavern Invasion. I went with four precious stones because I had prismatic shards to burn. And it was an easy 40 key gems just to get that done as well. So I teleported back off to Ginger Island with my prismatic shards. That was probably the fastest key quest that I've done to date. That awarded me with 40 more key gems. I also got 4,000 gold for the crop order for the pumpkins. And I decided to buy a full stack of star fruit this time from Sandy. Just to save myself from going back and forth all the time getting star fruit. It was very cheap. I had lots of money, so why not? So I went back to the quarry today. I decided to put down a path, making it super easy to replenish these trees later on when they get cut down with more tree seeds. It'll save me so much time to do so. So I spent the rest of the day just putting down a path, making sure that I do it correctly, so that future generations of tree farms will be super easy to make. These trees will be fully grown in a few days, so I'm looking forward to cutting all those down. Back to Ginger Island, and we have a lot more starfruit here that we can harvest. And all these starfruit, of course, will be processed into starfruit wine. So... I swapped out the quartz again with jades, and the reason why I'd done this is because I just didn't have enough deconstructors to make my quartz tactic for iron bars that efficient just yet. But I will swap back eventually when I have a lot more deconstructors to play around with. For now, it was going to be jades, it was going to be staircases, it was going to be skull cavern runs for tons of resources. Went to Robin as well, we're going to upgrade a shed to another big shed, that'll be the second big shed we have on the farm. We're smelting gold bars today, and we're also going to get the weathered floor recipe off the dwarf. We're also going to get the final rare crow that we needed in order to get the deluxe rare crow. So, it was Marnie's birthday today. Gave her the diamond. Marnie maxed out. Happy days. I also had a look at the quest. Sebastian wanted a cave card, 75 gold. It wasn't about the gold though. It was about friendship points towards Sebastian. Gave him the cave card straight away. That followed a sashimi, hoping it would be enough to max out his friendship. Not quite, still 7 out of 8 hearts. So I had a normal conversation with him. 
and that was enough. That's why it's so important to always just have random conversations with the NPCs. I put a slime jack into the fish pond just to shake things up a bit. Slime jacks do have a chance to give back slime on occasion. I also did to my slime hutch and I got all the lovely slime balls. This was going to get me a lot more slime to play around with so I can make sturdy rings if I wanted to. So a backup slime after this with the slime I had accumulated gave that to the slime jack fish pond. 20 slimes in total. That is the first quest completed with them. I had over 200 Omni Geodes here for Clint to break open which should finish out the mineral artifacts. And it did. Once I gave Gunther all of the mineral artifacts, it was then a matter of getting all of the other regular artifacts. So all of the minerals were done. Let's have a look at the other artifacts here. And I was missing quite a few. So what I done was I went back to the desert trader with the Omni Geodes and I traded up for artifact troves. Now it was five Omni Geodes per artifact trove, but it was worth it because I got 30 artifact troves right there. I'll get Clint to break open all these and hopefully I'll get the bulk of what I need out of it. You can also get other very interesting things such as golden pumpkins and pearls from these artifact troves and they make for the best love gifts in the game. I also got some treasure chests but because of the 25% discount rate it was only worth 1,250 gold instead of the usual 5,000 gold. That was unfortunate. I also hold up a strange doll as well which I needed and it was time to give more artifacts in to Gunther. Did I have all the artifacts needed to get another star drop i didn't i did however get a magic rock candy super happy with that just a few artifacts to go however so i should have that done eventually back over on ginger island i was looking for more bone fragments so i was just blown up some more stuff again because i wanted to get more tree fertilizers speed grows and quality fertilizers for future crops and whatnot so it's filling up the bone mills here these bone mills are just so overpowered they were saving me a fortune on resources to make more money I also went to the Desert Trader and I traded up 106 jades for 106 staircases, thank you very much. But this time, I was going to deconstruct these staircases into stone. The reason why I needed so much stone is because I wanted to make more crystallariums. And a crystallarium requires 100 stone each. I made 7 crystallariums there, I ran out of stone, but I did have a lot of iridium bars and gold bars. So the deconstructor now means that I will never have issues again in terms of generating stone. So it was back to the greenhouse, pulling up more ancient fruit. These, of course, will all be turned into seeds and they'll go over to Ginger Island. So for the second big shed, I filled it up with crystallariums. All of these will be generating jades, of course, for staircases and for stone. I also put up the sweet gem berry over on Ginger Island as well. I'm going to ship that off. And that was the last thing I needed to ship off in order to get the achievement for shipping everything off in the game. So, there was a choice here of Keys Cuisine and Keys Prismatic Grange. There was no way I was going to do Keys Cuisine, not with a 25% discount rate, not with the money I currently had. So, I went with Keys Prismatic Grange again. This time, though, it was super easy to do, because I had all the resources prepared for it, in case it happened again. I also went with Robin's Resource Rush. She wanted a thousand pieces of stone. That was going to be super simple. I just had to collect it from the deconstructors, and that quest was going to be done in no time at all. As we can see, 594 stone collected already from the deconstructors. I just had to do one more round of deconstructing and that quest was in the bag. As we can see, the quest was good as done. I get to keep the stone of course and I get 2500 gold from Robin. Back to Key's secret walnut room with all of the items needed to complete the quest. What were we going to do with our hard earned key gems? So we had a choice between the horse flute and more deconstructors. I was going to go with the horse fruit this time because summoning the horse on Ginger Island, it means a lot more time can be saved, a lot more resources can be gathered. I also purchased some key seasonings to make some elite food in the future for Wanato. And I also got some magic bait if I needed certain types of fish to make certain types of recipes. If I was out of season, it didn't matter with the magic bait. So today was another day of just collecting resources. I got all the jades here from the crystallariums and I filled up the other crystallariums with those jades that were just generated. I also gave Pierre a rabbit's foot. That maxed out his friendship, which was great. I also gave Evelyn a diamond. Now, this almost maxed out her friendship. One more gift with her should do the job. Vincent was also in the same boat. He was 9 out of 10 hearts, so one more gift with him should do the job as well. Leo was also in the same boat. I made a great comeback with Leo here. He was also 9 out of 10 hearts, so we'd have him done very quickly as well. Leah was also in the same boat. Very, very close to maxing her out. And we're also very close to maxing Kent out as well. So there was just a handful of Stardew Valley villagers 
that were very close to being maxed out. I also got the full shipment achievement, which is needed for perfection. The Sweet Gem Berry sealed the deal for us there. So that is one step closer to getting perfection in this game. But the massive hurdle will, of course, be the Golden Clock. 10 million gold with a 25% discount rate. Of course, it will take another 100 days to do that. But honestly, I don't know if it can be achieved with just another 100 days. But it will be very interesting to find out. Back to the quarry today. All of the trees have grown. I couldn't blow these trees up, of course. I would destroy the pathway I made. I had to use my axe, cut down these trees manually. I did, however, have the shaving enchant with an iridium axe. So it only took a few swings. And I was getting a lot more wood than these trees would normally give. So it was basically a whole day of cutting down trees and then replanting these slots with seeds. Look how easy it is to put down the seeds now that I have a pathway set up. It took me no time at all to get those seeds put down. I also gave Jas a pink cake, 9 out of 10 hearts with her. We got Krobus, max out friendship, absolutely delighted with that. We also give Leo another duck feather today, that maxed out his friendship, which was absolutely fantastic, just a few NPCs to go. That was Leo in the bag. So, I went to the event tonight. I got the rare crow that I couldn't afford during the last playthrough. I made sure I got it this time. And that was actually the last rare crow that I needed to finally get the deluxe rare crow. The deluxe rare crow covers twice the tiles of a regular rare crow or scarecrow. So, it's definitely something that is that, that you should make. It's something that every crop farmer should have in terms of saving tile space. We're back in the greenhouse, of course, put an up bench and fruit, convert those into seeds and bring them over to Ginger Island. So I gave Jazz a golden pumpkin today that maxed her out, of course. Another NPC in the bag with max of friendship. Give Leah another salad. This finally maxed out Leah. So we were finished with talking to Leah for good. We could move on with other stuff. It was time to check out the daily quests and Clint was at it again. He wanted more copper ores. Clint had a serious problem, so we didn't want to feed his addiction by doing that quest. So we decided to ignore it. We did, however, give Evelyn a lovely pearl and that maxed out friendship with her. It was time to go to Kent at this time. I had a golden pumpkin for him. Gave him that. That put him right up to 9 out of 10 hearts. The rest of the day was spent crafting some items. So I had enough resources gathered to craft all of the items on the first crafting list here. And I would have to craft all the items in the game, of course, to reach closer to perfection. But I would get there eventually. So I gave Clint a cinema ticket today, he said he'd go, that should get him the last heart that I needed and that would then complete another quest to maximise friendship with all of the NPCs in Stardew Valley, getting us one step closer to perfection. So we went and saw the miracle at Cold Star Ranch together and he loved the popcorn I gave him as well and when we came out he had the lovely star underneath his portrait that was kind of maxed out. So I now had a 10 max friendship with all of the NPCs except Garfunkel, but we would get there with the baby one day. <laughs> Time for another quest, Skull Cavern Invasion or Keys Hungry Challenge. They're both more or less the same in essence, where you're going down with staircases, so we might as well go with Skull Cavern Invasion because it gives more key gems. It was time to put more bone fragments into the bone mills and upgrade the watering can to give the efficient enchant. I didn't want that, I will come back eventually and try to get something better. For example, reaching to give more tile space with it or to give it an unlimited supply of water. For the rest of the day, I just put some ancient seeds down into Ginger Island Farm. I had over 200 ancient seeds to use, so I used them all up, and that was a good portion of the Ginger Island Farm covered. For the rest of the available slots, I just filled them up with star fruit. I then used my Deluxe Speed Grow that I've been getting from the bone mills to speed up the growth rate for the ancient seeds. So it was time to go back to the regular farm and look at all this lovely star fruit wine that I was getting. I also put some kegs down in the cellar as well. And it was time to reform the farming profession. This time we were going for agriculturist to get the 10% growth rate on the crops. The ancient fruit would grow faster. Look at all the lovely slime balls I can get today. This was going to get me back hundreds of slime. Over 700 slime right there. And that was just all in a couple of days, which was great. Back to Robin, of course. It was time to construct another building. This time we were going to go with another shed. We had the money, so why not? We needed the storage space. I could put kegs in other places, but I had a lot of space to use up on the beach farm. So, we finally made it to day 200. What a challenge this was. I just spent today just doing the Skull Cavern Invasion. Got down to floor 100. Got the Iridium Sprinklers. I got some other good stuff as well. Day 201. We're going to visit the wizard here. Give him an Iridium Bar. This completes a nice quest for him. And a reward, of course, 
is 5,000 gold. That's really nice money there, especially with a discount rate of just 25%. We are then going to visit the quarry and we're going to cut down all these trees because we are going to need thousands and thousands of wood to make thousands of kegs. We are going to need so many kegs in order for us to get the golden clock. We had to start now. So we are going to pay the desert trader a visit today. We're going to get artifact droves because we want to get all of the artifacts unlocked in this game to unlock another star drop. So we're going to get Clint to break open all these artifact droves and we're going to donate all of them now to Gunther and that is another achievement complete. One step closer to perfection, that is another star drop in the bag for us. The real challenge in this video will be trying to achieve 10 million gold to obtain the gold clock. That's going to be the killer challenge here. So we're going to visit Robin. We're going to upgrade a shed to a big shed. We are going to go for plenty of sheds in this video and fill them all up with kegs and crystallariums. So I made 40 kegs right there. I just had some materials lying around the place and I'll put those inside the shed. I'm also going to make one of each item here to get the craft all achievement this is needed to get perfection now i don't actually have enough resources to craft all of the items in the game at the moment i do run out of fiber i also need some coal as well and eventually i do end up running out of hardwood so i just have to do a little bit more grinding to get that i do however go back to the desert shelter today because it's a sunday and i end up getting a whopping 401 staircases trivializing any sort of future skull cavern run I also spend the rest of the day just cutting down some trees. I start with the desert here because I need a lot more wood to make a lot more kegs. So I ended up wiping out all of the trees over on Ginger Island as well. The hardwood is definitely appreciated. Ginger Island has loads of hardwood trees ready to be cut down. Hardwood is needed to craft all of the items in the game. So the greenhouse is ready with another batch of ancient fruit. At the moment, the ancient fruit growth rate in the greenhouse is staggering. So I, what I might do is I might just leave it a few days so that when I go into the greenhouse, I can harvest it all in one fell swoop. So for the rest of the day, I decided to go to the event and I actually got 2,000 gold for fishing up the most fish. It was nice. Last year I got fishing tackle, but I won't say no to any sort of money at this rate. It was time to get organized. So I'm going to pickaxe up all of these kegs and these will all be moved into sheds. And I also got lovely Iridium Starfruit wine from those casks as well. I was super happy with that. And the huge massive grind starts of putting starfruit into kegs. Eventually it'll be ancient fruit into kegs to get back wines. And the wines will more than likely do the trick for us when it comes to getting the golden clock. So it was time for the key quest. We'll go with Skull Cavern Invasion. 40 key gems. Easy enough there. Especially because we have so many staircases. We just have hundreds and hundreds of staircases. If I see radioactive ores or any sort of ores, I'll take them straight away. Because I need tons of ores still to make tons of really cool stuff to make my journey that little bit easier. Gold ores, iron ores, copper ores are all on the table for fast progression. If I'm going to make the 10 million gold, I was going to have to use everything at my disposal. Smelted some iridium ores here into iridium bars. And once this is all done, we're then going to craft some hyper speed grows. Now the reason for hyper speed grows is that we're going to put these on the beach farm so that the future ancient fruits will grow a lot faster because we're going to grow thousands of ancient fruits come spring. So it's all about getting prepared for spring to come. Best place for bone fragments and of course for clay is the dig site by far. So I'm just going to speed it up here. I literally go here every couple of days once all the resources have replenished and I just harvest all those resources. I also got four deconstructors. I'm going to be utilizing a new tactic in this video to make money and the trick is going to be using deconstructors. So, as we can see there, I just put a few staircases into the deconstructors to get back some stone. I will be selling stone in this video. I also purchased the magic rock candy because it was Thursday. As we can see, one jade converts into a staircase, and a staircase gives back 99 stone. That is 99 gold. That is almost doubling the value of a jade. So it might seem very small at the moment, but with a huge array of deconstructors that are on, it does become quite an effective method to get bursts of cash every now and again, especially when you have a shed filled up to the top of crystallariums and you can get hundreds and hundreds of staircases every single week. So it was time to make more items from the crafting bench. I needed iron bars primarily. So it was back to the mines and we were smelting iron ores into iron bars. We could try to finish off that craft all achievement, which means we're one step closer to perfection. So I went into my slime hutch today and there was loads of slime balls to be harvested and all this slime would come in super handy later on in the game, especially when it comes to making cork bobbers and sturdy rings, this time was going to come in so handy. Speaking of which, it was time to make an absolute ton of cork bobbers. All I needed to make these was wood, 
hardwood and slime and I had tons of each resource. These cock bobbers sold for 250 gold to pop. On a small scale they wouldn't get you much but making hundreds and hundreds of these would surely make a little bit of a difference. It was back to the crafting bench to craft more items I was getting closer and closer all of the time. To crafting all of the items in the game what was really letting me down at the moment believe it or not was hardwood. I needed a lot more hardwood to finish off this achievement so I needed to make the mini obelisk there. I also needed to make the solar panel which required refined quartz. I also fished up a squid because I had to start looking at fish needed to craft all of the cooking recipes in the game as well. So this is my shed at the moment filled up with some crystallariums. I will be making more crystallariums as the days go on. The more crystallariums I have, the more jades I can generate, the more staircases and stone I can get. So I made some deluxe retaining soil here and this has a 100% chance to irrigate crops every single day so that when I start putting some of the ancient fruit onto the beach farm I won't need sprinklers at all. So I'm putting down mahogany seeds here for hardwood later on because we we'll need tons of hardwood later on for various projects and it was collecting more oak resins from these trees as well because I needed to make a lot more cakes. I needed thousands of cakes. The ginger island farm was coming on quite nicely. It was more or less 50 50 at the moment between star fruit and ancient fruit. It was time to say goodbye to our lovely oak resin farm. We were going to use this space for crops instead come spring. So I just wanted to get it prepped now for ancient fruit. Because the goal to get in the golden clock was going to be thousands and thousands of ancient fruit. So Haley wanted to have a baby. I said yes, of course. The more the merrier. Back into the greenhouse here and it was time to harvest more ancient fruit. All of these ancient fruits will be converted back into ancient fruit seeds because I wanted to literally fill up the beach farm when ancient fruits come spring. So all of the ancient fruits we get at the moment, they'll be converted back into seeds. All of these star fruits that are being picked up now at the moment won't be replanted back down. Instead, ancient fruits will take their place. Once all of Ginger Island has been covered with ancient fruits, we will then save all of the future seeds to go onto the beach farm. So we're going to need hyper speed grows, we're going to need deluxe retaining soils to make sure our lives are a little bit easier. So this is the last batch of star fruit that are going into the kegs. I'm also putting down hyper speed grow here on the Ginger Island farm so these ancient fruits will grow a lot faster. It was time for another key quest. I wasn't going to do Key's Cuisine because that's just impossible with a 25% discount rate. So we were going to go with Key's Prismatic Grange. So a few in-game hours later I managed to complete that quest. I had most of the materials lying around so it was a very quick quest to do. With the key gems I had at the moment I decided to buy two batches of pressure nozzles. This would increase the range of sprinklers. This would also mean I can plant more angel fruit seeds on the beach farm. So I checked out the auto grabber inside the coop and I had an overwhelming amount of eggs, duck feathers, wool and I wasn't really processing any of these items because I was just so busy doing other stuff. So I decided to just start processing some of these eggs to see if I can make some extra profit because every single piece of gold was going to be necessary to get this gold clock by the end of the video. I took the cave patrol special orders quest here so it was time to kill some lovely dust sprites. I took a monster mask. I had the quest done in no time at all. This was super beneficial as well because I was getting lots of coal from killing the dust sprites and I needed tons of coal still to smelt tons of ores into bars. This is probably one of the most effective methods in the game when it comes to farming coal. There are certain ring combinations I could take to optimize this but for now I was just happy with the monster musk. 6000 gold for completing that quest, that was absolutely welcome and I was closer to getting the gold clock. <laughs> I had 55,000 gold, I needed 10 million. All of the mahogany trees had fully grown, it was time to cut them all down and stock up on an absolute ton of hardwood. It was in back to the crafting bench and it was time to finish out the last few items I needed. Upon making the mini obelisk I got the craft master achievement. We are now one step closer to perfection. It was time to visit Marnie. had to buy some hay because I was running out of hay very quickly. So I just purchased 377 pieces there and just trotted into the mill. I decided to just sell all of the coop products before they were processed because I just wasn't going to have the time to keep processing them all. I didn't want to go farm more crystals either for my nails machines. So I just sold them all as is. Went back to the mines, collected iridium bars. I was also collecting gold bars as well. I could sell all these too for loads of money. And if I had copper or iron, that was primarily going to go towards cakes. I also started to deconstruct more staircases because I wanted to get more stone so I could sell the stone as well. And bear in mind that 999 pieces of stone would give me 999 gold. But more importantly, I wanted to make more crystallariums. You need a lot of stone to make a lot of crystallariums. So these deconstructors were an absolute game changer for me. So it was back to my big shed where all my crystallariums were. 
I had 56 new crystallariums ready to go, so eventually we were going to have a shed filled up with crystallariums, generating jades. It was also back to Ginger Island, pulling up more ancient fruit from the ground here, and that would all be converted back into ancient fruit seeds. And I then went back to the Desert Shredder, day 217 now, so we're getting there. 531 staircases. So we were doing really well with staircases. Because I had a slime hutch maxed out with slimes, slime ball generation was also really good as well. Every few days I could go into the slime hutch here and get tons of slime. I made 51 more kegs by the end of the day just to increase my wine output. So I had loads of kegs here now at the moment but I still needed a lot more shades and I still needed a lot more Asian fruit seeds. Day 218 it was time for another special orders quest. This time Clint wanted me to kill 50 bats and I'll do that for him no problem. It was also time for another key quest. We'll do extended family because it wasn't the hope we were going to play the Junimo Kart game. <laughs> I'm just so bad at Junimo Kart. But I wouldn't have any problem at all fishing up those legendary fish, especially with all of the gear that I could access now because I was in the end game. It was also time to start filling up all these kegs with more starfruit for more starfruit wine. And we're finishing up the day by starting our quest to get some of the legendary fish, starting with the Glacier Fish Jr. Very difficult catch indeed. Then we get on to the sores, get the radioactive carp. The next day the greenhouse is ready to go again with more ancient fruit. So we're going to pick all those up. We're also going to pick up all the ones in Ginger Island as well. And we'll harvest those back into seeds for the lovely beach farm come spring. We're now closing in on spring. Just a few days to go. So we're going to end up with over a thousand ancient fruit seeds ready to go for the beach farm. So it'll be a real nice spring setup for us. We also had a shed now filled up at the top of crystallariums. I also went to Pierre and I decided to purchase five of every single crop that he had to prepare myself for crafting all of the cooking recipes in the game. I didn't need to purchase five of each crop, but I didn't know which ones I needed and which ones I didn't, so I just purchased five of everything just to be safe. I also went to Sandy as well and purchased more starfruit, rhubarb and beets. Didn't need to purchase the cactus seeds because you can just pick those up in the desert easy enough. So I also went to the winter start event here, I gave Leo some cheese. I was hoping for a tea set, which is why I went to this event. I already had all of the relationships maxed out. I got a pink cake off Maru, not too bad at all, but I'll just end up selling that. I also gave Gus a coconut here as well. This completes another quest and this awards me with 600 gold. So I still wasn't going to turn down any quest that I got. Unless of course Clint was looking for copper ores. That was a huge no. Give Willie a link cut here as well. 550 gold in the bag. Thank you very much Willie. So it was back down into the mines. The goal was 50 bats. If I saw iron ores or anything else along the way I would get those as well. Killing 50 bats is quite easy especially using a monster musk and the reward is always going to be quite good. Any sort of reward that you get from Clint when it comes to saying monsters is always a good reward. 6,000 gold which was great. So you're probably wondering why I haven't sold any of the wines yet. It's because I do not currently possess the artisan perk for the farming profession. I will eventually switch over to that perk later on and I will sell all those wines because they would be worth 40% more. And that is a staggering amount, especially with the 25% discount rate. I need all the money I can get. So I need to maximize all the perks that my character can attain. Goes back to the quarry now again. All the trees have fully grown back. Having the path down makes it super easy to replant seeds and to put tree fertilizers on those as well. During the night, Haley gave birth to a baby girl. I called it Rory because I thought it was a boy, so I just, <laughs> just slipped up there a little bit. Grandpa also visited me in my dreams and he was so proud of the job that I'd done on the farm. As a reward I got a statue of perfection and this little beauty generates iridium ore every single day. We were now in spring. It was time to put all of our lovely ancient fruit seeds down on the farm. So these ones were going to get hyper speed grows because I could use sprinklers with these ones and the rest of the seeds then planted elsewhere on the beach farm would get the deluxe retaining soil. Having the Iridium tools made it super easy to cultivate up the land and to get all these seeds planted before the day ended. I also activated rain totems as well so I wouldn't have the water crops that I just didn't have enough deluxe retaining soil for. So I had enough truffle oils to make tons and tons of rain totems going forward which was great. Even if I didn't have the rain totems I did have an Iridium watering can so watering up the rest of the crops down there wouldn't be too much of a hassle anyway. The ginger island farm is now full to the top with ancient fruit as well, so things were looking good. It's time for another key quest. So I was looking at the key crops, 100 key gems was difficult to pass down. I said I'd take on the quest, key's kindness would still be very difficult as I didn't have a whole lot of items on hand for loved gifts. So I spent a great portion of the day just fishing up key beans. 
I also had a new big shade filled up to the top with kegs ready to process my lovely ancient fruit into ancient fruit wine. So we are going to be looking at thousands upon thousands of ancient fruit wine by the time we get to the end of this video. It was also back to the greenhouse to harvest all of the ancient fruit in here as well. And this ancient fruit would not be converted into seeds. It would just be converted into wine instead. It was time to go to Robin and get her to build another shade. Then it was down to the Skull Cavern to get some resources. I needed iridium, I needed gold, I needed iron, I needed copper. I basically needed everything. Iridium still had some value when it comes to selling it. Iridium bars with the blacksmith pork, even with a 25% discount rate, still weren't too shabby at all. So, day 229, Gifts for George was the quest of the day for us. And we just had to give a dozen leaks to Evelyn to complete that quest. I got really lucky here, just north of the farm, there was three leaks on the ground. Unfortunately, the gatherer pork didn't activate and I didn't get any double leaks there. It was also back to our lovely slime hutch to harvest all of the slime balls and get a lot more slime so we can make some great stuff going forward. So, day 230, it was time to harvest the first batch of key fruit. And all this key fruit is going to be put into seed makers to make more key beans. And this process would be repeated until I had enough key seeds to plant on the ground to finish off the quest. In terms of all of the key quests that are available to you, I find that this one is definitely the longest and most difficult to do because of the fact that it takes constant grinding to actually find these key beans in the first place. But it's always worth it because 100 key gems is absolutely nothing to snuff at. 99 more kegs were created today. They will go into a shed. And they would process ancient fruit into ancient fruit wine. It was back to Robin, of course. And it was time to upgrade another regular shade into a big shade. So we would have Robin primarily working around the clock. I also came across the trash bear. He wanted the daffodil. Gave him that straight away. I do attempt to do his chain quest so he cleans up the beach. You don't need it for perfection. But it was extra content for this video. Because I suppose the last thing you want to see me do is just sleep. Harvest ancient fruit and just sleep all over again. <laughs> because... Once we finish all these other achievements, that's what it turns into. So it was time to finally craft all of the food items in the game. All the crops I purchased have been fully grown, so I have harvested all those. I had all the fish needed, and I just got the Gourmet Chef achievement there. One step closer to perfection. So we now had all items crafted. We had all recipes made. There was only a few things left for us to do to get perfection. Another key quest for precious stones. We had prismatic shards to burn. Let's have a look at the perfection tracker. 86% at the moment. All we needed now was the gold clock and the four obelisks on the farm. So these requirements required money. So what you're going to see going forward is a huge grind fest of me trying to assemble 10 plus million gold to afford the gold obelisks and to afford the gold clock. And the main tactic we're going to use to achieve this is ancient fruit converted into ancient fruit wine. And eventually we'll sell all the wine with the artisan pork to obtain millions of gold. At the moment we had a lot of kegs on the farm. So it did take the majority of the day to replenish the stocks in these kegs and to harvest all of the current ancient fruit wines. The hardest part about the challenge now was finding the willpower to constantly grind out the ancient fruits on the farm and put them into the kegs every couple of days now it did take over six days for the cake to process the ancient fruit so it would basically be a weekly activity where one day per week it would take almost a whole day to replenish the wines in those cakes so it was back to getting key fruit converting them back into key beans planting those on the farm all future key gems that i was going to get now were going to go into deconstructors so my goal was to literally have a house filled up to the top with deconstructors so I could process tons of staircases into stone and sell the stone for a decent profit. So it was back to the greenhouse and what's happened now is that all of the ancient fruits are ready because I left the greenhouse a few days so I would only have to go in there kind of once a week to harvest all of the ancient fruit. I also picked up the last leak I needed for the special artist's quest. I gave 12 leaks into Evelyn. She was super happy with that. 2,000 gold in the bag. But Evelyn will also send me a special item the next day that I can add to my farm as well. Special item being a coffee machine. So I went with Gus's famous omelettes. Just needed to get 24 eggs to complete that quest. That would be super easy to do. Back into regular mines. I was looking for copper ore badly. Needed copper to make more kegs. I had lots of iron. And I had lots of oak resins and lots of wood. Copper was the resource that was letting me down at the moment. Copper is one of those resources where if you're at the very beginning of the game. Or the very end of the game. It's something you always seem to need. Because kegs are something you always seem to need if you want to make the big money. 
So, it was back into the Skull Cavern. I was farming ores of all types. I was getting some key beans too from blowing open some of the nodes, which was good. I actually come out of here with tons of key beans that I can actually plant on the farm, which was quite useful. Day 237. It is time to harvest all these key fruit. I would have to make extra space in the farm to put down the rest of the key beans once all these seed makers were finished, but I did have an iridium hoe and an iridium watering can, so it wasn't too much of a challenge at all to quickly make more space for all these key fruit to be planted. We also had to think about maximum output capacity when it came to converting ancient fruit into wine and Robin was going to help us with that. It was time to finally get another shed put on the farm. It was also time to go back to the quarry and to get all the wood off these trees. So we're just going to rinse and repeat the tactic here of cutting on all the trees, replanting the seeds and then using tree fertilizer so the trees will grow back very quickly. So it was time for another key quest. The weeks are coming around super fast. We're going to go with four precious stones again because we had so many prismatic shards it wasn't even funny. It was also time for another special artist quest. This time we're going to go with Robin's Resource Rush. Collect a thousand pieces of stone. Deconstructors will trivialize that quest altogether. So I put the prismatic shards into the box there and I got more key gems back as a reward. I also went into my coup pair and more eggs had generated for the Gust quest. So I grabbed all those that give those the Gust later on. It was also time to use my deconstructors and to deconstruct some staircases back into stone, completing Robin's Resource Rush. Super fast, that was 2500 gold in the bag. So I had 24 eggs in total. I went into the saloon here, put these into Gus's fridge, and that was another quest completed for Gus, awarding me with a lovely 3000 gold. So that was more money in the pocket for us. So these gold gains were very small, but they do help in the long run. And when it comes to the end, when it comes to the crunch, all these quests do, as a matter of fact, make a huge difference. So I sold some key fruit today, and with the rest of the key wins that I had, I just planted those on the farm. The reason why I'm getting so many rainy days is because I keep activating rain totems. I still had plenty of rain totems left. And it was time to finally harvest all of the ancient fruit wine from the kegs, which basically takes a whole day. The next day, look at all these ancient fruits. We had tons of them on the beach farm. I was able to harvest this batch right now because I used hyper speed grow. All of the other ancient fruits, or most of them, are using deluxe retaining soil, so I would have to wait a few more days before I could get my hands on those. I also had a shed here filled up to the top with jades. I was going to harvest all these lovely jades. The ginger island farm was also filled up to the top with ancient fruits ready to be harvested as well. So we are going to have hundreds if not thousands of ancient fruits to be converted into wine by the time this day is out. So I started looking into other ways to make money. I had a huge amount of cloth there. I started putting those into looms. I also made tons of cork bobbers because I just had so much slime hardwood and regular wood and I just sold all of the cork bobbers. I do sell quite the amount of cork bobbers which makes a difference. It was also time to go back to Robin as well. It was time to upgrade the shed she built a few days ago into another big shed. So the trend continues. It was also back down into Skull Cavern. Got two rain totems here from a chest. Activated one straight away which means I wouldn't have to water crops tomorrow. So that was super handy and I also spent the rest of the day just getting more materials from the Skull Cavern so I can make more kegs and other bits and bobs. So, it was back to the quarry to get more wood because I needed to make even more kegs. You're not going to believe the amount of kegs that we're going to have by the time we get to the end of this challenge. <laughs> I also had tons of slime balls to harvest to get loads of slime. So if I wanted to make more cock barbers down the road, I could do that no problem at all. I filled up a big shed with kegs and I had still over 100 kegs left over from the huge amount of kegs that I made. So I placed those outside the farm. I also put down a path as well just to add some sort of structure to the farm. It would also mean that I wouldn't have to worry about debris damaging the kegs or the crops going forward. Once all the kegs were down, it was time to go into day number 245, so we're almost halfway there. These key fruits would be the last key fruits I needed in order to complete the key crop quest. This will give me 100 key gems in total, which means I can get loads of deconstructors from this. I also went to the desert trader and I got over 1,000 staircases because so much jades had accumulated. To be exact, Almost 1,458 staircases added to my lovely inventory. It was time to pick up another key quest. Of course, we do Danger in the Deep, because that was going for 50 key gems, and I could just staircase my way down to the bottom within a few in-game hours anyway, so it's no problem at all. This time I purchased a whopping 9 deconstructors. It was time to drastically increase the output of my lovely precious stone, and I could sell that for loads of money. So... Day 246, it was down into the hardened versions of the mines. I got down very quickly because I had staircases to burn. Activated the shrine, completed the quest, got my key gems. 
left the mines, it was time to deconstruct more staircases back into stone. Eventually, I end up selling hundreds and hundreds of full stacks of stone, and you'd actually be quite surprised how much money this will actually net me. So the more deconstructors I can amass, the more money I can make on a daily basis, because I had hundreds of staircases to work with. So it was time to fill up another big shed with more ancient fruit. It was also time to fill up all these kegs as well. So what we're going to see now is every six to seven days, we're going to see a huge wine harvest that's literally going to take the whole day to pull off. We're going to go with Robin's Resource Rush again because it was just so easy to do. It was more or less free money because we got to keep the stone as well so we could sell the stone for extra profit. Look at all the deconstructors I had now. 2,500 gold in the bag. We're doing pretty well at the moment. But the big question remains, can we get the gold clock by day 300? That's going to be the big challenge. So we spent the majority of today just harvesting up all of the ancient fruit. As we can see, we have tons and tons of ancient fruit, so it does take the bulk of today to get that done. So I made a tough decision. I decided to sell my animals. I wasn't really using them anymore. And I got 20k plus for some of these animals, which was really good. So they were worth quite a lot of money because most of them run maximum hearts. Some of them were almost on maximum hearts. I then went to Robin and it was time to demolish some buildings to make room for more sheds. So I got rid of the coop, the mill, the barn, and I also got rid of the fishing pond as well. They did of course serve us well, but it was time to industrialize this farm a little bit more to maximize profits. I also got the golden daily quest, Gus wanted a diamond, 2,250 gold. So I done that straight away. I had diamonds to burn as well. I had so much materials locked away in the chest. It was just insane. So that was more money added to my wallet and I just spent the rest of the day going through Sinusap Forest, cutting down some trees here, assembling more wood because the grind for wood never ends. Needed wood to make more cakes, needed wood to make cork bobbers and things like that. So I spent the great portion of the day just putting staircases into the deconstructors, getting back stone. I also had a lot of copper bars to work with here as well, so cake production could be continued easy enough. It was time to harvest more ancient fruit. Look at all this lovely fruit that we're going to pick up. All this will go into kegs, of course, the next day. I'm just going to quickly show you what I have in my chest at the moment. I had well over a thousand pieces of ancient fruit there. Close to 1,500, actually. So what was happening now was that I needed more kegs badly. I was actually losing out on money by not having those inside kegs. As a result, it was time to go to Robin and upgrade a shed to another big shed. Back to the deconstructors. You will be seeing lots of this because all of this stone that I do sell pays off greatly in the long run. It does accumulate. I dare say I could potentially make almost a million gold just from selling all of the stone that I sold for these 100 days. Now I didn't add it up but I'm pretty sure I came close because each stone is worth one gold. And when you have all those deconstructors it does accumulate quite fast. Back to the desert trader, 580 more staircases. This of course trivialises the Skull Cavern and it also means that I can get more stone to sell as well. Look at all this lovely stone that I'm going to sell. I do spend enormous amounts of time deconstructing staircases into stone because I'm just waiting on the ancient fruit and waiting on the cake. So in my spare time that is the primary tactic I'm using to make money. Look at all the gold I'm getting for all the stone that I decon, you know, from the staircases that I deconstructed. Just tons of it. It was time for another key quest. This time we're going with Key's Hungry Challenge because it awarded more key gems. 25 key gems for doing that and all I needed was staircases to trivialise that challenge. So back into the Skull Cavern. And when I got down to floor 100 I got some bombs. Not bad, there's always a need for bombs of course. Spent the rest of the day just doing the usual farming for resources. If I saw barrels as well I always prioritised the barrels, I whacked them up because there's always a chance I can get another lucky ring from a barrel. So I only have one lucky ring still at the moment. It would be really nice to get a second one before I achieve perfection. That That is of course, if I can achieve perfection on this run. Let's take a look at all of these kegs filled up to the top with ancient fruit wine. There is just hundreds of it here. Eventually I'll end up coming out with over a thousand ancient fruit wines every single week. And you might think to yourself, you'll reach perfection in no time. But because the discount rate is so low, it hits hard every single time you sell it, making perfection extremely difficult to get. So we're gonna go back to Robin, build another shade, then upgrade that to a large shed. The trend continues, of course. I put more kegs down on the Ginger Island farmhouse here as well, just to fill up more space. It does take the majority of the day now, if not the whole day, to fill up all these kegs with ancient fruit. I also went into the volcano dungeon today, just for a break from the usual hustle and bustle of the usual daily activities. I was hoping 
for a hot Java ring, but the game just refuses to give me one. So, day 256, a time for another special orders quest. We're going to go with Gus's famous omelet. I make a huge mistake by selecting that quest because I sought all of my coop critters. I couldn't actually do that quest. I also get Robin to upgrade my shed to a big shed. And of course it was back to the slime hutch as well to harvest all of the slime balls into slime. So as you can see, a trend has occurred where I'm following a very specific roadmap every single week to try to maximize my profits. So I decided to harvest some bug meat today. I used monster musk, I also used a napalm ring to maximize bug meat collection. So I found an infested floor here, but it was floor 24, which means I couldn't spam this floor over and over. But I did have staircases to burn, so I could technically spam this floor over and over for the whole day to get tons of bug meat. The reason why I wanted tons of bug meat was so I could make tons of sturdy rings, as those rings sold for 750 gold a pop. And that was a lot of money per item with the challenge that I was doing at the moment. So I literally spent the whole day inside the mines just slaying bugs. So, day 258, look at all of the Asian fruit. It was all ready to be harvested. It was going to take me the whole day to harvest all of these ancient fruits, but it would be worth it, because once they're all harvested, I could then put them into the kegs the next day, which also takes a whole day because I had so many kegs built. Speaking of kegs built, another shed was fully upgraded. It was time to fill it up to the top with kegs. Once this was achieved, it was then back to Robin for the usual story. It was to get Robin to build, yes, another shed. We're going to put that right on the farm. That will be upgraded to a big shed as well. I'm going to put it over here where I demolished all of the animal buildings. And I'll also put some kegs over there as well to have them on the outside. Back down into the mines, we're looking for bug meat. We're also looking for copper ores. I find a nice mound of it here, which is really nice because I still needed a lot more resources to make a lot more kegs. I also got an infested floor on floor 28, which was nice. So if I wanted to, I could spam that floor for the whole day to get tons of bug meat. Day 260 was basically a day of filling up kegs with more ancient fruit to make ancient fruit wine. That's all I done on day 260. It now requires a full day to get this done because there's just so many kegs on the farm. The next day, it was time for another key quest. We're going to go with Skull Cavern Invasion. Of course, 40 key gems, easy enough. That means more deconstructors for us. When I went down into the Skull Caverns, I always stop on a floor like this when it's just filled up to the top with lovely, valuable resources. It never gets old, in my opinion, where you just blow open a ton of ores to get loads of resources. The casks were also finished. It was time to get Iridium Star, Starfruit White. So that is sold for nice money indeed. So it was time to get four more deconstructors. I'm going to put those back in the farmhouse over in Stardew Valley. That means my lovely stone farming tactic will become even more lucrative who would have thought that i would rely on stone so much to try to get 10 million gold never would have guessed it in a million years unless of course i did the challenge so this is all the stone i sold and this is basically two days worth of accumulating stone using deconstructors and as we can see there's a lot of stone there back to the mines to get more copper it was always copper i needed i seemed to have enough iron copper was always the crux though it was always copper Story of my life, farming copper. It doesn't matter what challenge I do, doesn't matter what 100 the video it is, it comes down to copper ores. <laughs> I did, however, make tons of sturdy rings and I could sell those directly to Marilyn. 750 gold for each one. So once this was done, it was time to go to the Statue of Uncertainty and switch up my professions. I wanted to sell the wine that I had currently accumulated to see how far off I was from making the 10 million gold to get the gold clock. So I switched up a few professions here. I'm going to start with foraging because I wanted to get more wood from the trees and of course farming to get the artisan so the wine sold for 40% more. So I went with forester there too and lumberjack. So that's more wood and hardwood for me which means I can make more tackles and other stuff like that. This is all the wine I currently had accumulated so I'm going to sell all that and it'll be interesting to see just how much gold I get from all that wine. So it took a serious effort to grind all that out but we were just getting started, folks. <laughs> so that netted me 4.6 million. Not even halfway there to get this gold clock. At this moment in time, I just couldn't even fathom getting the gold clock. You know, within these 300 days, I thought to myself I'd more than likely need another 100 days of content to actually get it. But we will find out towards the end of the video. So, day 266, and it was the usual picking up all of the ancient fruit. This took the majority of the day because we had to pick it up inside the greenhouse, inside the Stardew Valley farm, and over on Ginger Island. The next day, it was the same. We had to fill up all the kegs. 
and we had kegs in so many sheds now we had kegs on the Stardew Valley farm and we had kegs over on Ginger Island it literally took the whole day to get this job done but it was going to be worth it and if we wanted to get the gold clock this is what we had to do of course we're going to go with more key quests another skull cavern invasion i couldn't believe the luck i was getting with skull cavern invasion because it meant more radioactive ores and they sell for a thousand gold a bar so any time i got a quest like that i was just really happy about it if i saw radioactive ores i would always prioritize them because one thousand gold per bar is absolutely nothing to snuff at so at this stage of the game, I was getting quite bored in terms of just grinding because there was nothing else to do. All I, all I was doing was basically just picking up the ancient fruit, doing key quests, filling up the kegs and that was it. And all I could do to shorten that time span down was to just make more kegs. <laughs> because I had so much ancient fruit that I could just keep making more and more kegs all the time. So I put some kegs out in the cellar there as you saw, and I had a lot of mahogany trees had fully grown on the Stardew Valley farm, so I spent a good portion of the day cutting down those and massing more hardwood so I could make more cork bobbers and whatnot down the road. I also found a little secret area here, and I fished up a real cool painting of a boat. You can only get this on the beach farm, so it's a nice painting. I put that inside the house. The kids might appreciate it. It was back to the usual deconstructing staircases into stone, because the stone tactic was actually working for me. It might be hard to see it because I needed so much money for the gold clock, but the little gains here and there would certainly pay off towards the end. So, day 273, the weeks are coming around real fast now because there isn't much I can do during each day. I'm just harvesting more ancient fruit. Back over to Ginger Island, we're going to harvest all this ancient fruit as well. And then we're going to put all this into the kegs the next day. So the trend continues. Basically, it'll be utilising this tactic until I have enough money to get the golden clock. The big question is, how long... Is that going to take? Will I be able to do it within 300 days? We're actually going to find out very soon because we're now on day 275. So we're almost there. Time for another key quest. We're going to do Key's Hungry Challenge. That's another run to the Skull Cavern, which is nice. There's always, always room in our inventory for lovely ores. Now, I have been letting those Iridium ores accumulate. Eventually, I will end up selling tons of Iridium bars. So by the end of the day, I'm at 155,000 gold. And this was mostly because of the ancient fruit that had over-accumulated. I just didn't have enough kegs right now to keep up with the ancient fruit demand that was happening on the farm. But that's something we might try to remedy down the road. Back to the slime hutch, of course, we were getting more slime balls. It's just so satisfying breaking open those slime balls. Then it was back to Marlin, of course. I was making more sturdy rings to sell to him. Because 750 gold for a ring is pretty good. And I just really wanted to get this gold clock so I was using every method at my disposal. If it came to making rings, I would absolutely do that. Fishing tackle was also on the line as well. So I fished up another decorative item today. This one was a decorative trash can. Now it doesn't actually function as a trash can, but it was a nice decoration to be put on the farm. I decided to go to the trash bears when he wanted an octopus. And I thought my fishing days were over. So I went down to the beach <laughs> trying to get an octopus for him later on. It was time for another Robin's resource rush. I was so happy from getting these quests all the time. That was going to be another easy 1,000 stone collected and money from Robin in the bag. So I attempted to get the octopus today. I managed to actually get it on my first attempt. I was quite surprised because I, I hadn't fished in quite some time at all. So I was going to give this to the trash bear. Then I realized he doesn't actually appear on rainy days. I'd have to go to him on a non-rainy day to give him that octopus to complete his quest. It was time to deconstruct more staircases back into stone. What else was I going to do with my time, you know? That was Robin's resource rush quest completed. That was more money in the bag for me. So that was another 2,500 gold from Robin's resource rush. And after deconstructing tons of staircases, I had tons of stone to sell. Each stack of stone was bringing in almost 1,000 gold. So it was worth the time effort. So I made tons of money today from selling primarily Iridium bars, they accumulated over the past season. 249,000 gold, I was super happy with that. Mining really came true for me. I also started pulling up more secret items from the game. I got the solid gold Lewis statue there. Then I went up behind the community center and I got the Junimo statue from there as well. There were still other collectibles I had to get, so we'll get those systematically over the next few days. I didn't need those for perfection, I just wanted other stuff to do. So I decided to enchant my fishing rod. I wanted the master enchant. And it took a few goals to get it. The reason why I wanted master is so that I didn't have to get a key seasoned seafoam pudding to get the iridium crobus later on. 
I also filled up the Physics 101 from the volcano. That was another nice picture I could add to my house to make it beautiful. I did have a seafoam pudding lying around in the fridge, so I ate that, and it was time to fish up one of my most favourite decorative items in the game, the Iridium Acrobus. It did take a while for the line to actually activate to pull it up, but I got it eventually, and that was another nice collectible. So I gave the bear an octopus today, but he still wasn't happy. He demanded that I bring him more items, so I clicked on him after giving the octopus, and what he was looking for here was actually a mushroom dish. I thought it was a carp surprise, but it was actually a fried mushroom he wanted. So I made the fried mushrooms from ingredients that had lying around the house. I also made a carp surprise because they looked, in all fairness, quite similar, but it was the fried mushrooms he wanted. That was another quest on for the trash bear. Then he wanted, I believe, an artichoke dip, and I needed milk to make this recipe. I sold all my cows. I didn't have milk, so I couldn't actually continue that quest chain. I also got the Junimo plush from the bush since it was the last day of the season, 12 o'clock, get it from the bush there. I spent the rest of the day doing what I normally do on Ancient Fruit Day and that's pull up Ancient Fruit out of the ground like a pro. <laughs> and this would have taken the whole day because there's so many Ancient Fruit. The next day was just filling up all the kegs with new Ancient Fruits. We now had less than 20 days to go to see if I could get enough money together to get the cold clock before the 300 days. It's going to be very exciting to see if I can actually pull that off, if I can get the gold clock within 300 days of playing this game, if I can get perfection. I also had to bear in mind that the obelisks were going to come in at a total of 2 million as well, because the two obelisks were worth 500,000, and the two others were worth a million each. So, I started with some of the basic obelisks, 500,000 gold for each one. It was time to start putting these on the farm. I didn't actually have enough resources to make the obelisk to Ginger Island, so I had to go farm dragon's teeth to actually make that. I needed 10 dragon's teeth in total. I did have a lot of dragon's teeth, but I used them all up to make warp totems so that I could get to Ginger Island without paying Willy that ferocious 1,000 gold that he charges. So I spent the whole day inside the volcano dungeon trying to get to dragon's teeth. When I had them, I went straight back to the wizard and that was the final obelisk I needed. One step closer to perfection. What I needed now was 1 million gold for the gold clock. Those obelisks did put me back to 2.8 million, but it had to be done sooner or rather than later. So I might as well do it sooner and get it out of the way. I should have actually done it earlier to make progression a little bit faster because those warp points would have come in fair handy and they would have saved me resources. It was time to sell a couple of more batches of ancient fruit wines. Let's see how much money I'm going to get from these. 3.3 million gold. Is it enough to get the gold clock? It is not. I needed a good, a good few more stacks to actually get it. I had 6.2 million gold at the moment. It was time for another key quest. I did look at the key crops. I said no. Couldn't bring myself to doing that again. So I just went with four precious stones. Just had to get four prismatic shards. I had about 20 of them. So it's going to be no problem getting those. Put those into the box. More key gems for me. And that means more deconstructors. Which means more stone. Bigger profits. Once these deconstructors were purchased. It was time to look for more secret collectibles in the game. There was an actual really cool print here called a foliage print. That I fished up from the waters in Ginger Island. That would make another nice real cool picture to be added to my lovely Stardew Valley farmhouse. I then headed on over to the desert and I fished up the Pyramid Eagle here. Which is another really cool picture that I can add to the farmhouse. So because there was no ancient fruit to pull up out of the ground or kegs to put ancient fruit into. It was back to using the deconstructors, putting the staircases into them, getting back stone, selling the stone for even more money. It was going to be very, very tight in terms of if I was going to be able to get this gold clock or not. I have to admit, I actually totally forgot about giving the rabbit's foot to this uh, driver here to get the lucky charm. I have only got around to doing it now and I'm on today 286. I feel really embarrassed about it, but it totally slipped my mind because I was so focused on making money. To be honest, I just totally forgot about it. It did, however, give me a full wallet, so I had all of the wallet items finally achieved. I could have gotten that lucky charm ages ago i easily could have gotten it during the first 100 day video it just totally slipped my mind i also fished up a necklace from the bad house area give that to abigail you can also give it to caroline for different dialogue as well but i gave it to abigail because i was in a generous mood abigail did lose it after all so i done her a massive favor i also at 20 to 1 clicked on the bush here and i got a really funny scene of mayor lewis and marnie jumping out of the bush and running away what were they up to in that bush let's leave it up to the imagination Day 287, it was time to pick up all of the ancient fruit. This, of course, was going to take us the whole day to do. Day 288, it was time to get all of that lovely ancient fruit and put it into the kegs. 
I did forget to fill up these kegs initially, so it was not a big mistake on my part, but I'll do it now anyway. It was now quite a challenge to fill up all of the kegs within the day that I was given. I was always cutting it close, it's 10 past 1 now at the moment, and look at all the kegs that I still have to get through. So I did try to the best of my abilities to get all of these ancient fruit into the kegs before the timer hit 2 o'clock. I did actually get all of the ancient fruit in there, I just didn't have enough time to actually harvest all of the kegs, but that didn't really matter, because I could just harvest those kegs the next day. The main thing was that I got all of the ancient fruit in there to maximise ancient fruit wine profits. So we are now in day 289, it was time for another key quest. So we're going to go with Key's Hungry Challenge, we're away from the key crops. We've done that twice now, you know, we've worn the t-shirt. 25 key gems, easy enough with that one, we'll just use some staircases. I also spent a good portion of today watering these crops because I kind of ran out of rain totem, so I had to use the Iridium watering can. But later on that day, I did go back down to the Skull Cavern, completed the challenge, no bother at all. I got a lucky ring here from a barrel. I actually could not believe it. The amount of barrels that I had to smash open to get that second lucky ring was staggering. But I was super happy with that. I finally got my second lucky ring super chuffed. Will I use that ring? We'll find out very shortly. There's only a few days left to go for this challenge video. So I decided to sell all of the rings that I had accumulated over the past few hundred days to Barney because I wasn't really using them. Some of these rings were really good, but I just wanted to get extra money. So everything I had that I didn't need, it was sold basically. I did think about selling the lucky ring or not, or should I use it? To be honest, I just sold it because the challenge was almost finished. It wasn't going to make much of a difference. And it was 100 gold in my pocket. <laughs> I did go to Willie's boat area here and I fished up another really cool decoration called the Lifesaver. And you can hang this up inside your house as well. It makes for another really cool decoration. So it was back to putting staircases into the deconstructors. A story of my life. Getting back stone, selling the stone. We all know how it goes at this stage. <laughs> then I went to the quarry and this time I decided to blow up all the trees because I didn't really need much wood anymore. This was greatly satisfying. You just can't be going into a condensed area like this with mega bombs and just laying siege to the entire area. Look at all these resources I was picking up. All of those stone walkway floors sell for one gold a pop, including the sap and the wood. It would all be sold. Some of it would be processed into other items. For example, the iron bars I was going to process into spinners. They sell for 250 gold a pop. So that was going to make me a nice profit there. And once all these spinners were sold, it was then time to see how much money I made. 1.1 million gold. That was primarily from selling ancient fruit wines as well. But was that enough on day 291? No. 7.6 million. I was getting close. But it was going to be very hard to see if I had enough money to make it to the gold clock by day 300. I did spend the rest of the day using up the rest of my bombs, just blowing open trees to get wood. To be honest, I had nothing else to do. I could have put staircases into deconstructors, but my willpower to do that was more or less down to zero. <laughs> so I decided to have a little bit of fun instead and just blow up Cinder Sap Forest and collect all that lovely wood in the process and sap and everything else. With the sap that I actually accumulated, I made some trap bobbers and I sold those for 200 gold a pop. So that was more fishing tackles I was going to sell as well. This was only going to make a dent in the gold that I had. But all these dents add up over the hundreds and hundreds of days that you play the game. So it was still important to maximise the resources that I had. And to process them into items that would have given me much greater value. Of course I was deconstructing more staircases back into stone. 84,000 gold there primarily from selling stone. And a few other bits and bobs like slime and things like that. The 294 begins with me kissing my wife to the point where she spins around a few times. It must have been one hell of a kiss. And then the rest of the day is spent picking up all of this ancient fruit. The question is though, will we have enough time to get the last batch of wines we need to get the go clock by day 300? At this moment in time, I had absolutely no idea. So all I could do was just keep getting on with it and just grinding away. The grind was almost finished. I did decide to go to the Stardew Valley Fair today to change it up a bit, and I did give Mayor Lewis a nice surprise. <laughs> Look at all the lucky shards and the truffle oil to top it all off inside my Granger's play. Mayor Lewis was not impressed at all. He did, however, give me 750 star tokens <laughs> to get rid of all that as quickly as possible. But I decided not to. I decided to leave it there and let the town know just what kind of a man Mayor Lewis is. With the 750 star tokens I got, I did go to the shop here, purchased a few nice things, I got the dried sunflowers, they'd make for a nice decoration. 
and I also got the fedora hat as well, and I left in style without collecting my Grange display items, so everyone can see Mary Lewis's purple shorts and the truffle oil that he also asked for. <laughs> Day 297. It is time for another key quest. Key's Hungry Challenge is on the list, of course. We had staircases to burn. 25 key gems, so why not? Back down into Skull Cavern, I got a seed maker here. And seed makers are actually really nice. Now, not so much at the moment, but if I got it 100 days ago, it would have been great. I did spend my key gems on another deconstructor, and now I had a room filled up to the top with deconstructors. So I could now deconstruct more staircases for more stone to make more money. <laughs> I did the same on day 298. I didn't know what else to do. I was so close to getting 10 million gold. So close. I literally spent the whole day just deconstructing staircases. This was the best method I had to get the most out of a day in terms of making money. 48,000 gold today from selling stone. Have you ever saw so much stone in your life? Let me know in the comments. I haven't. Back to the slime hutch to get more slime. Wasn't a whole lot of slime balls at the moment, but it was better than nothing. Probably guess what it did after this. Yeah, you guessed correctly. It was deconstructed more staircases back into stone to maximize the profits of today. Was this enough to get me the 1.2 million gold I so desperately needed to get the gold clock by day 300? Unfortunately, it wasn't. So it was day 300. There was only one day left on the ancient fruit, which was a total bummer. If that ancient fruit had grown, I could have potentially, potentially gotten the gold clock today which meant I would have completed the gold clock by day 300, but I did not. I did grab these battery packs though, and I'll sell these because why not, what else am I going to use them for? So, day 300, we didn't get the gold clock, but what a challenge it was, so I'm going to leave the video there. I hope you enjoyed it, I'll upload the next Stardew Valley video in the next couple of days, so stay tuned for that. I know what you're thinking at the moment, why not play the next one or two days to achieve perfection, it's because it's a 300 day video. So there you go folks. 300 days done and that is actually a joke we are actually going to continue until we achieve perfection <laughs> if you doubted me for any moment that i would actually stop the video there so close to perfection shame on you you can however make it up to me by subscribing to the channel and helping my channel grow <laughs> day 301 we are pulling ancient fruit up from the ground this will be the last time we have to do this praise the lord the cakes were also finished as well so I'm going to get all of these lovely ancient fruit wines out of these kegs, sell everything, and make a total of 1.2 million gold. Is that enough to get the gold clock? Let's find out. Day 302, what do we have? Enough to get the gold clock. Yes, 10 million gold. Straight into the wizard's house. The gold clock for 10 million gold. Yes, please. Where are we going to put this magnificent structure and finally attain perfection? We'll just slap it down there, just over where the slime hutch is. Ah, there we go. That just felt so good. You have no idea how good that felt. Let's have a look at the perfection tracker. 100% complete. Perfection has been attained. All produce and forage shipped. Obelisks on farm. Go clock on farm. Monster Slayer Hero. Great friends. Farm level maxed out. All star jobs. Cooking recipes made. Crafting recipes made. All fish caught. All golden walnuts found. We have attained perfection. We finally did it. It took us 302 days. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it in 300 days. But, in all fairness, I think 302 days isn't too shabby to attain perfection with just a discount rate of 25%. It was time to ascend the steps and go up into the summit where we get the official ending of Stardew Valley. The game doesn't technically end, but this is more or less an ending scene. I kiss my lovely wife Haley, who has been with me through these troubling, troubling times of relentless grinding, and we get to enjoy a lovely cutscene. What a challenge this was. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my lovely community for your support. Without you, this video never would have been made, so thanks very much for that. Go back up to the volcano area, you will get that hat I currently have equipped it to my character from a monkey you can talk to. You can also purchase a golden egg from Marnie for 100,000 gold. You can also get it for 100 key gems as well from Key Secret Wallet Room if you want golden chickens on your farm, which are one of the most profitable animals in the game. So, we are now officially going to leave it there. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the series. More 100 day videos to come. Thanks a million for watching this. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, 
hit that subscribe button it would really help me out i'm really trying to grow the channel to 100,000 subscribers this year it would be quite the achievement if i could get that it just means a much larger cozier community so i hope you all have a great week thanks again for watching and i will see you in the next video bye for now